What's going on, everybody? I hope everyone's having a fantastic evening, a fantastic afternoon, a fantastic pre-noon, no matter where you are in the world. I'm Hassan Piker, and this Dawson Ever Podcast coming to you live from sunny California, Los Angeles, folks. We're live and alive. Marat's right behind me. There's nothing else to be seen behind me, just Marat. And I hope all the boys, girls, and MBs are having a fantastic one because today's a beautiful day. Today's a wonderful day. Today is a very special day. That's right. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Sunday. And on Sundays, we have a lot of fun. But more importantly, folks, it's Sunday Pup Day. I'm not even going to I'm not even going to do anything. I'm just going to straight up go right into it. I'm going to straight up go into it. Because you don't want to see me. You don't you don't want to see me. You want to see this motherfucking puppy. Let's just do it. Let's do the puppy reveal. Let's get it out of the way. Ladies and gentlemen. It brings me incredible amounts of pleasure to show you the newest member of the uh the piker family hold on i gotta close this door real quick one second you can't even see anything yet hold on bam there it is She's, she's uh, whimpering a little bit right now because uh, I, I put her in this crate for the first time. Like, not crate. This She's never been here before. She's never been in this part of the house before. But there she is. Now, of course, I'm not going to just... Sh I'm going to give you a, a closer look in one moment. but And tell you all the adventures I had to go through to get her. But... There she is, uh, my my currently unnamed, my currently unnamed pupper, who we will be naming today on stream. That's right. She's a big gal. She's a really big girl. Um, she's only seven and a half weeks old, or uh, well, uh, we're unclear on whether or not if, if she's seven weeks or eight weeks old. Uh, that part was not communicated to me uh, all that well, but she's massive already. So. You're probably wondering how I got here. That's the real question, right? Everyone's probably thinking, how the fuck did this happen? Also, I I uh, posted on Instagram. And I'll post on, on Twitter as well. Ladies and gentlemen, boys, girls, MBs, we don't know what uh, this puppy's breed is. Uh, she is a Mastiff breed, possibly a Tibetan, possibly a Tibetan Mastiff breed mixed with some other stuff. Um, But she's massive. She is massive. Okay. Anyway, I'm just going to say puppy reveal on Twitter and then post it, uh, post the go live link. Okay. 
on. Hello. Lady. I keep misgendering her, unfortunately. Because I'm not used to having a... I mean, Fiona is a female, Marat's dog. But I'm not really that used to having it. Oh, she's taking a like into the microphone already. What the fuck? Oh my God. When I send a tweet now, it gives me like a 30 minute to make edits because I have Twitter blue, by the way. Let her speak. She don't speak unless she doesn't really speak too much. She's not very uh, loud unless it's last night and she refuses to fucking sleep in the crate. Oh my Lord. Yeah, apparently I have Twitter blue now. Thank you, Elon Musk, for my Twitter blue. Has she met Fiona yet? No. She doesn't only speak when spoken to. She just doesn't speak at all unless... Uh, unless she's, uh, you know, upset that you put her in a crate. Which is normal for puppies this age. You have to crate train. Uh-oh, she's trying to get up here. Where are you going? Hello. I'm on here like this. Hold on, hold on. Look at this, 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 look at this little pupper. Uh -uh. Okay, don't move. Don't move. <sighs> okay. There she is. Okay, so today's stream is going to be a uh, interesting one. Probably not a super long one because I'll be honest, this is all I've been doing. I, all I've been doing is just like spending time with her and not really doing anything else, being a dog dad this entire time. Um, yesterday, is she soft? Yes, yeah, she's incredibly soft. Her fur is super soft. So here's what happened. Okay. Let's get let's get into it. Let's explain the situation at hand. How do we get here, right? This is a question that people have. Well, I'll tell you. So, I went to the adoption agencies. Uh, I went to all of the 501c3s. And there were a lot of puppers that were great there. Okay. But the way that I got fish, who was also a rescue, was completely coincidental and completely random right fish is my first dog for those of you who don't know uh who was with me for six wonderful years and um you know he was he was just like left at an orange county tire shop so i'm a big fan of kismet you know fate uh with and vibes as well big 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 fan of vibes with dogs but also with uh kismet as well so So what did I do? I went on Craigslist and I looked for big breeds. And I found a Mastiff breed. This was the Mastiff breed. She's uh, She comes from a family. We don't know what her mom is. Um, but uh, Craigslist, oh no. Wait, why oh no? The, uh, the family wanted to have her, but realized that she is going to be too big for their daughter. And the dude who had her originally was like, yeah, she eats way too much already. And also on top of that, like we already have some big dogs 
and I'm having a child. Now, why is the I'm having a child important as far as this uh, component goes? Well, the reason why it's important is because originally I was supposed to go today to get her. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, okay, okay. She's trying to get up. She's trying to get back on the table. Um, so originally I was supposed to go and, and get her today. Uh, Ray and I were going to go travel over there, you know, IRL it a little bit too. And then uh, come back into the puppy stream here. But that didn't happen. Why? Well, because my man's wife went into labor. Like his actual wife. Yeah. And he was like in panic mode. He's like, dude, I'm going to be honest with you. If you want this dog. He's like, brother, if you want this dog, you got to come get her. <laughs> Literally tomorrow. So instead of going to a wedding like I was supposed to on Saturday for my friend uh, Jack Wagner, I had to travel. I was like, congratulations, but like, dude, what the fuck? So I had to travel over uh, to an area in California to go grab this little thing and then bring her home. And, and then afterwards, there was no shot. I was, a, I was going to be able to stream Let's Be Real. Where are you going? Where are you going? Uh-oh. You're getting active. She loves... She's very curious. Okay. She's very, very curious. Anyway, hold on. I'm gonna... I'm gonna put her down. One second. I'm gonna put her behind me for now. So she has space to travel. Trying to get her to poop in P2. She hasn't pooped yet. There she is. Okay. So. Anyway, here, um, so yeah, I picked her up, I brought her home, and I, I've, I've, been a, I've been a puppy dad already, as you guys know. Um, you know, I took care of, of Fish, I, I raised that thing uh, when he was like literally a tiny, basically barely above a fetus, right? So, you may notice that she's laying on the bars, just like on the blast off photo, on the puppy reveal blast off photo, she's laying on these metal bars. The reason for that is because she likes the cold weather. So that is the reason why she's doing that. She loves uh, she loves metal bars so far. She loves uh, you know playing with chew toys and crying at night nonstop when I try to crate train her. Um, that's, that's it for, uh, for the, for the puppy reveal side of things. Anyway, so brought her home. Uh, obviously it was a lot of work. It's a lot of work to have a puppy. So I went straight into it and I haven't really stopped. I haven't done anything. I was supposed to go to Jack's birthday. Didn't do that. Didn't go to the wedding. And also on top of that, I was supposed to work out this morning and play basketball. My trainers couldn't do that either. Unfortunately, because, you know, uh, she is, I'm a dad now. I'm a new dad. You're kind of problematic for not sleeping in the crate with her. Cancel, give her the stream key. So for those of you who are wondering, like, what's her breed? Uh, we don't know. We don't know what her full breed is, okay? But I did get one of these things. I don't know. It's just like the first thing that came up on Amazon. It's a dog DNA test, so it's a puppy and me. Puppy three and me. Puppy 23 and me. Um, it will probably take a long time. I mean, I don't know how long it takes for you to get, like, 
get the results back. But anyway, she's not vaccinated. She only has gotten dewormed. Um, so I need to, uh, holy fuck. Scum art is so fast. How is this even possible? This motherfucker, how did you do this? Like, I I don't even under, this was, bro, that is literally insane. I just, I just revealed this, this dog. Anyway, as I was saying, I did that and found out my German Shepherd Husky Misk is actually part wolf. So vets can do a DNA and have reports to you in hours. Yeah, but I'm not doing it through. Uh, do you want to give the dog autism? What the fuck's wrong with you? Yes, I'm going to give her uh, dog autism and she's going to be gay. Um, okay. Let me explain to you something. Uh, as I was stating... So she's not, um, she's not vaccinated yet. So I have to get her vaccinated first round of vaccines like this upcoming week. And then, uh, I think by the end of like the 16 week process, she'll get fully vaccinated so she can be around other dogs as well. Obviously I need to keep her indoors for the most part. I use the same company. They just told me my dog was an American village dog adopted from Mexico. No breakdown of the breeds. Wait, really? Okay, well, anyway, um, and you might have noticed that she doesn't have a name yet. I do have some ideas for names, and I want to ask you guys, and we're going to look at, like, training videos. We're going to look at, like, breed videos. Look at her pushing the crate already. She's so big. Like, you can't really tell. Okay. I mean, for, for four, for, uh, I mean, not four, for eight weeks old, she's pretty fucking chunky. So we'll see. But, um, I have, uh, I have names that I like and we will find, uh, and I will, you know, heavily, uh, skew in favor of, and I will ask you guys if you think that, you know, if you think that that's good or not, but. Anyway, what's up, dude? What are you doing? Don't, don't, don't. Please. No, you're doing it. You're, you're literally doing it. Don't try to get her attention. She's sleeping. Okay. Marat's at the door. Marat has been a real dick since uh, I got her. The entire time, he's been like, uh, she loves me more than you. And doesn't realize that, like, I will literally kill him. Okay, he does not realize that I will kill Marat. Like he he doesn't realize this. He thinks like it's a joke. It's a game. This dog is imprinting on me. Okay. Anyway, um, where was I? So, where the fuck was I? Oh, okay. So after a long process. Um, we got this Mastiff mix, okay, and I don't know what her, uh, I don't know what her breed is entirely, I, I think she's like a Tibetan, uh, Mastiff mixed with some other, like, big dogs, okay, um, like, I have no idea what her, what her mommy is. You're supposed to link your finger and wipe it on her nose or something like that. Usually when they're younger. Wait, what? That sounds interesting. Um, Yao Ming hangs out with a giant panda cub. Okay. Maybe keep her up now so she sleeps during the night. The unfortunate reality is that um, these dogs, like, because she's got, like, a Tibetan Mastiff in her, they apparently are uh nighttime dogs like they're guardian dogs so 
uh, they don't sleep at night. They they sleep during the day and then they they stay up at night, and they just like roam the house or uh, roam normally if you have like a big open space. Looks like she has Leon Burger in her. Possibly, we don't know. Is she spayed yet? No, man. No, of course she's not spayed yet. She's fucking eight weeks old. No. I'm not I'm not spaying or neutering my fucking dog, uh, especially because she's a big breed until she's like at least a year and a half old. OK. Motherfuckers, you're right. Obviously, you have to spay and neuter your animals so that they don't accidentally end up having fucking litters. Uh, you know. Like, I get that. That's how that's how fucking uh, animals get. Uh, you know, that's how the that's how the. That's how the uh, uh, the shelters are filled to the fucking brim with dogs. But, like, I'm not neutering a large dog. A large breed. One, over one year is too old to get spayed. Shut up. I don't know about spaying, but neutering. Neutering, uh, at least with larger uh, breeds, is supposed to be done later in their lives. We've already talked about this. Her fucking hips haven't even formed fully yet. You're over here... Uh, you're over here talking to me about what I'm supposed to be doing. Shut up. Okay. I'm not going to listen to random chatters. I'm not going to listen to vet MD. I'm going to listen to fucking a vet that I trust. Okay. <sighs> anyway. Um, man, invest in that doggy dubbers for the first heat cycle. Thank me later. Yeah, I heard. I know. I heard. I heard. So, as I was stating, as I was stating, I can't even finish a goddamn story here. So, I played, I played with her all day. I played with her all night. Um, she basically, uh, she gets the zoomies for a little bit, runs around, plays with some toys. Okay. And then she will literally sleep for like 40 minutes. Only to briefly wake up in between, take a pee directly next to the pee pad while looking straight at me dead ass in the eyes and then falling immediately into the pee pad. Falling immediately into the pee pad or not into the pee pad, sorry, into the piss puddle. Okay, and then running up to me to play with me again while she's covered in piss. So that's that's basically her personality so far. She's awesome. She loves exploring uh, and she loves pissing not on the pee pad, but next to it for some weird reason. Um, as far as poops goes, as far as poopies, we are uh, she's pooped three times so far in this house and um no, four times so far in this house. She poops a lot because she eats a lot. She's a big girl. And um, I have an outside pad on my balcony. It's like a natter. Uh, natty. Natter. It's like more natural. Uh, it's like a biodegradable, disposable outside pad that I have for her. Which she po pooped on already. And also she has pooped twice. She's also pooped twice on regular poop pee pads as well. However, last night when I tried to start crate training her, she immediately took a shit in the crate. She got into the crate and immediately took a shit in the crate and started fucking screeching. So I had to put her in the sink and like wash her little fucking paws she was covered in poop and then clean up the goddamn crate as well because that was also covered in poop but it didn't it didn't stop curious of you curious of you said why you needed a massive dog nothing wrong with it but big guy doesn't mean big dog necessarily I like big dogs, man. 
Rory V, thank you for the 25. Get the subs. I like having a big dog. Fish was uh, big as well, and I loved it. I, I like being able to, like, wrestle with my dog. That kind of thing. That's just what I like. Where did you get those cool black shades with the pink lenses? Are you talking about this? They were thrifted. If you're talking about these. Uh, like I made them pretty much. They're like fake. They're they're uh, fake YSL that I got for like a dollar. Um, and then I put lenses in it. All right. Have to look at look into getting a snuggle puppy. They have a heartbeat and heat beat inside and help with puppy crate training. I don't know what that is, but maybe. Um, so we don't know what her like. I don't know what her her uh, like actual full blown breed is, but because she has uh, some Tibetan Tibetan massive in her, I'm just like operating off of that. And, uh, like I looked up, like people were saying she might be Leon Burger puppy. So I looked up some of the, some of the puppy, uh, photos and she does kind of look like a Leon Burger puppy. Look at this. But she absolutely looks dead ass. Uh, like the Tibetan massive one is a lock. But regardless, these are both very big breeds. And um, the dude said uh, she was a Mastiff mix. Like she was mixed with Tibetan Mastiff. Um, but hold on. So that's a Leon Burger puppy. This is a Tibetan Mastiff puppy. But depending on how many months they're old, how many months old they are. But here. I mean, look. She looks like a dead ringer for that. You know what I mean? I really admire you getting a big dog. They're a ton of work. Do you know how much exercise they will need? Say goodbye to your sleep schedule. <coughs> Don't be too confident about Tibetan Massive Law. Craigslist is sketchy as fuck and they're a super rare breed. No, I know. 100%. I don't give a fuck what she is, honestly. Like, just like with Fish. I didn't know what breed she was. I didn't know what breed he was when I got him. They told me she uh, he was a Rottweiler. And I was like, sure, whatever. And he was not. He was just like straight up pit bull. And the same goes for... Uh, and the same goes for, for, uh, her. Like, I just, I didn't give a fuck. I just wanted like a big dog. Um. Dog breeds have been a special interest of mine going on 30 years. She's definitely at least part to bed massive. Yeah. I mean, she does, she does look like, um, talking about big dogs. Have you been on a Kongal shepherd? Those things are crazy, huge and full of energy. Love them. What do you mean? Of course I've been around a Congo. Bro, I'm Turkish. What the fuck? Oh my god. That's all fuck. Holy shit. Yeah, breed is pointless. She's a purebred cutie. Yeah. Um. She is a purebred. Stay on top of her chewing on stuff. Yeah, I am. She the features clearly have Tibetan massive in them, but we'll be interested to see how she matures. Yeah, aren't Kongals illegal in the U.S.? I don't think so. PFT is a former Mastiff guy. This morning I said goodbye to my best friend and very good boy Leroy. Oh yeah, this is like uh what kind of massive is this? This is like look. 
So it's like a bull mastiff, right? They're so sick. I love mastiffs. Uh, anyway, they're great. They're great dogs. They get very big. Uh, the thing I love about the thing I love about mastiffs is a, is like breeds. No matter what kind of mastiff. Uh, I spent a lot of my childhood with a Mongolian Mastiff, very similar to Tibetan. They shed like a lot, and they constantly sleep very low energy. Regardless, though, they're extremely loyal and have really strong guardian guarding instincts. Just my experience. Yes, that is what I've seen. So the reason why I didn't want to get like a Bull Mastiff or anything is because they slobber too much, whereas uh, uh, she doesn't seem to have that. So. Um, but yeah, the, the, the thing I like about it is that here's what I found out about this breed. Okay. Here's what I found out about this breed thus far, that they are one very agile. They, they are, uh, they can get very fast. They get very big. Uh, the female of the breed, we're going to look at some videos in a second, but the female, uh, Mastiff gets to uh, I think like 70 to 120 pounds uh, whereas the male gets to 90 to uh, to 150 pounds are you going to lean into her like in the cold or would you rather her get used to the heat well, for me, uh, I I'm gonna do whatever she's uh, comfortable with. I I'm getting a, a a like a cold pad. How are you gonna keep her cold in the summer? First of all, it's the summer already. I literally always have. Uh, I always keep it insanely cold in here, regardless. And also on top of that, I got uh, I got AC out the wazoo. I fucking run the AC even during the winter. Okay. So the temperature is always going to be the same regardless. It's LA. And two, um, I, I am going to get like a cool pad for her too. <sighs> but yeah, um, they get really massive. They, uh, this breed gets really fucking massive and I am, uh, excited to see what she grows into. But as far as like the breed goes, like, yeah, it's a very, if it, the, the reason why I don't, one, the reason why I don't think she's like actually a full blown Tibetan Mastiff is also because like, well, one, we don't know what the mom is, but two, um, th this is like, they breed these things, you know what I mean? They're like expensive ass fucking breeds. So yeah, my, my family keeps uh, pumping in or uh, popping in. Bro, that dog won the lottery. I think she'll be just fine. Yeah, I agree. But regardless, um, here's the average sizes. Minimum uh, 26 inches from the ground up to the top. Minimum 24 inches for the female. Weight goes from 90 to 150 pounds male. 70 to 120 pounds for a female. And the life expectancy is 10 to 12 years. So, like, as far as big breeds goes, uh, this is a breed that lives uh, for a lot longer than normal uh, big breed dogs do. Let's watch this video, and then we'll uh, get a little bit more information on uh, this breed. And then I'll, I'll uh, you know, once I, f once I give you guys all, this all the info, uh, I will... I will give you, uh, you know, we'll, we'll name her. No politics day, correct? No, of course not. It's a fucking Sunday. And, and my puppy is like sleeping right behind me. No, we're not going to do, we're not going to do fucking any politics today, my friend. I'm sorry to break it to you. Okay, let's watch. Ancient grandfather of all Mastiffs. Meet the Tibetan Mastiff. The Tibetan Mastiff is a member of the working group. They measure 24 inches and larger, weighing 70 to 150 pounds. 
An ancient breed developed in the Himalayan mountains as a protector and flock guardian, the Tibetan Mastiff may well be the source from which most modern working breeds descend. Skeletal remains discovered in China place the dog's ancestors in the Stone and Bronze Ages. There are many accounts of Tibetan Mastiffs accompanying the armies of the Greeks, Romans, Assyrians, and Persians. The first dogs to be sent to England arrived in 1847 as gifts to Queen Victoria, and it was there that the breed's current name came to be used. The first known Tibetan Mastiffs to enter the United States did so in the late 1950s as gifts to President Dwight D. Eisenhower. Tibetan Mastiffs are very independent, strong-willed, reserved towards strangers, territorial, and extremely protective of their pack, and may not allow visitors into your home. Yeah, so that's something that I've heard, which is why I need to, like, socialize her aggressively from the jump, um, which isn't really a problem with humans thus far. Obviously, like, uh, there's, like, there have been so many fucking people. There's so many people in this house right now. So, how much dog hair shit over the house already? Contrary to popular opinion, um, everybody says that, like, she sheds a lot, which makes sense. But I think they have, like, a double coat. So, um, because of that, they shed one time, uh, or no, twice uh, during the year. And then they don't really shed as much. They are generally calm house dogs, though they may bark at night. This is a large, strong breed, and obedience training is essential. These dogs have minds of their own and are quite sensitive. Puppies need extensive socialization, attention, and structured daily routine. Tibetan Mastiffs generally do well with cats and small dogs, especially other Tibetan breeds. That thick and woolly coat doesn't take much maintenance for most of the year. A weekly brushing will do the job. But be ready for a massive shedding in late spring or summer when a daily yeah. session with an undercoat rake or a de-shedding tool can help keep shedding under control. For more on the Tibetan Mastiff and all of your favorite breeds. Anyway, um, my neighbors have two of them. They sound like they want to shred me to pieces when I walk by their yard, but they actually have the sweetest doggy girls in the world. Like you said, they go to doggo training with them every week since they were puppies. Yeah. I am going to, I am going to, uh, obviously start obedience training and puppy training ASAP. And I already have a trainer for, I already have a trainer for her lined up for when she is like a young adult too. And obviously I have already started training her, uh, regardless, you know, immediately, uh, positive, uh, reinforcement and treat training, uh, and, and, you know, doing that over and over again that's i've been doing that pretty aggressively um staying on it non-stop it's just that um it's just that like it takes so much time and it takes so much effort you know what i mean um breed standard for the akc oh here are some of the traits family life affectionate with family very lovey-dovey four out of five three out of five for good with young children uh, good with other dogs, three out of five. I have to socialize her with other dogs ASAP too. Uh, hair everywhere to no shedding. It's a four out of five. Coat grooming frequency is a three out of five. Drooling, uh, three out of five. Uh, coat type is double coat. Coat length is medium. Openness to strangers. They are reserved. Um, they are uh, three out of five playful. They are incredibly vigilant. They're like very protective. The breeds tendency to alert strangers are around. Um, so, you know, that's, that's another reason why I have to like be very uh, careful with how I train her. Uh, adaptability lives for routine versus, uh, you know, how easily a breed handles change. This change includes living conditions, noise, weather, daily schedule, other variations in day-to-day -day life. Um, I guess these are the colors and the markings, stuff like that. This dog is never getting a triple double, triple double with those dog shit stats. The fuck did you get? She already won a triple double in my heart. Okay. That's it. That's all that matters. 
Um, but yeah, I mean, look, I trained my pit bull, uh, who uh, wasn't uh, known to be like a very smart breed in general to to fetch. So, pretty sure I'll be able to handle uh, a, a, a a mastiff mix, especially when she's like. She seems more intelligent than uh, uh, Fish was even. Uh, but, like, I mean, she's real. She's hella goofy right now. I am a little worried about her hind legs. They haven't, like, fully developed yet. I feel like, you know, I don't know. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Like, she, she's just, like, you know, she jumps around a lot when she's, in, she's getting her puppy zoomies. And, uh... But, like, she's got long-ass nails so right now. Uh, which is part of the reason why, I, like, she's on the hardwood floor. She, like, slides a little bit. Uh, I'm obviously going to do a full vet visit and all that. Don't let her jump or walk the stairs a lot at a young age. This sounds like hella work. Goddamn, my tiny-ass apartment wouldn't cope. It will definitely smash as a big dog die. You have the space for it. Yes. So, obviously... One of the one of the most interesting parts about this uh, so far for me has been thinking about how fucking broke I was when I got fish and how I had to make do versus now when um, I went into uh, like I went into a, a, a facility like a Petco style, you know, dog shop and immediately was able to get like five hundred dollars worth of shit. Um knowing full well that she's going to grow out of it immediately. But like I was thinking about how fucking broke I was with fish and how little space I had with fish originally. And it's just like wild to think uh, uh, of, of how difficult it was versus now. I mean, it's obviously always going to be difficult, especially because nanosecond gaming, thank you for the 20 of the subs, especially because, oh my God, bro, I did not sleep a lot last night. I did not get to sleep a lot last night. She would periodically wake up and yelp like just just would feel lonely and would be scared that she's lonely so i'd have to wake up and just like sit next to her while she's still in the crate and the way that i designed it is like there's basically a crate there's a pee pad outside of the crate right so that she gets up from the crate and can walk like there's like a like a caged area like the one you see behind me where the crate and the and the pee pad are inside of the cage area so she can like get out of the uh the crate the crate is next to my bed obviously um so she can get outside and pee on it except when she did when she did pee on it she would then follow through she would then follow up and, and literally fucking lay on the pee. <coughs> anyway, if you already know, in the beginning, puppies need to be in confined spaces and slowly expand them. Sound like you're already doing well. Yeah. The crate might be too big for her, though. I had to sleep on the floor next to the crate for two days before my dog started stopped crying in the crate. Yeah. Some of the people in the comments are disgusting for real. Always have a problem with something. Uh, comments of what? I don't even fucking know what's going on. Uh, I like. I, to be fair, I don't really care either. Like, I have no idea what's going on. I don't know what the outside world's like opinion on this is. Um, and I don't even give a shit. How many times have you washed her already? Um, I've only washed her uh, in the sink one time, but like not full body. Five minute documentary on the roof of the world. Episode two, Guardian of the Ma Nomadic Tribes of Mastiff. Let's see. What did Ray think about her? She loved her. She was very excited. 
and also was shocked at how big she is. Literally was like, this this puppy is like. In a tent, woven by the size of my uh, torso. He's a little tense. A Tibetan Mastiff is standing at the door, as if knowing what its masters are saying. They decide to find a companion for the old dog. Maybe this can cure its depression. The male host, Ani Mama, went to find Tibetan Mastiffs for their dog. For herdsmen, Tibetan Mastiffs are not ordinary dogs, but the guards for their families. It is said that a purebred Tibetan Mastiff can fight with three wolves and even defeat a leopard. They are understanding and with strong will. If Tibetan Mastiffs are dogs, they should be called Heaven Dogs. There are a series of standards for selecting Tibetan Mastiffs, such as a thick skin, huge claws, and a mighty appearance. But it's the first sight that counts the most. Yeah, they're fucking massive. This is a Tibetan Mastiff raising family. Many foreigners have come here to buy Tibetan Mastiffs. This dog. Like, that dog, from what I understand, is only like six months old. That is a six month old dog. She's a natural. New streamer just dropped. Yeah, she's already, she's already getting after it. That's how big they get by six months. Look, he's really good. Tibetan Mastiffs are seldom sold between herdsmen, as this animal is priceless in their tradition. Despite his hard effort, Ani Mama is still empty handed. But finding his own Tibetan Mastiff should not be hasty. Local people who Ani Mama runs into and has a talk with may have several Tibetan Mastiffs. Coat pattern resembles a German Shepherd too. Not a German Shepherd, but a Leon Burger potentially, but I don't think so. Has been waiting and then shows up at a proper time. Wait, why didn't they ask to suck each other's tongues when they met each other? No, that's a Dalai Lama specific uh, uh, thing. The sight of the mastic cub made Ani Mama feel that they have known each other for several years. <laughs> Moved by Ani Mama's sincerity, the host decided to give the pup to him for free. According to their tradition, Ani Mama should select an auspicious day to take the cub home instead of taking him right now. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, she woke up. And she's looking up at me. Uh-oh. Go back to sleep, little one. Wait, hold on. Ani Mama returns with a hada, a white scarf. I thought she was going to poop because like when she wakes up, she will never mind. Nope. She's going back to, she's going right back to sleep, bro. This fucking dog sleeps all goddamn day 
and then we'll literally just w- just be a wig all night. I am so cooked. I am so exceptionally cooked. You don't understand, okay? Like we're gonna do the doggy DNA test, but dude, I woke. <laughs> she woke me up like six times last night. You can probably notice how fucking tired I am. Uh, it's because it's because of that. That little cutie back there. Pups sleep 14 to 19 hours a day. It's because she's growing at a rate humans can't even comprehend. It's tiring work. Yeah, I feel like she grew since yesterday. I'm not even going to lie. All right, let's keep going. You know, Tibetan music in her DNA. It woke her up. Yeah, I doubt that. If she poops on stream, I'll donate 10 subs. She is 1 million percent going to poop on stream, okay? And don't donate 10 subs for that reason. That's a certainty. Donate it for the top of the hour ad break to allow 10 people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour because the top of the hour ad break is upon us on Sunday Pup Day. And if you no longer want to see those ads, if you want an uninterrupted broadcast experience, all you need to do is subscribe, which you could do for $5 or for free. One of my friends got a Mastiff a few years ago. First year is rough. Almost like taking care of a kid. Worth it in the end, though. Yeah, Nancy's Pelosi's. Thank you for the five gifted. Salt Shaker, one, two, three, two, one. Thank you for the ten gifted. Allowing 15 people. Mix V-Loan. Mix the V-Loan with the rig. Thank you for the five gifted. Allowing 20 people to no longer see ads at the top of the other. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Um... Searing its nose. Random trivia. Did you know crate training is illegal in Sweden and Finland? I don't know why or care. Just interesting. I mean, it's, I'm not surprised by it. I don't even really, I don't know if I like full blown need to crate train her because like she's going to be beside me all the time anyway. Like back in the day when I used to have to go uh, to work and not be able to bring fish. Like that's why you have to do crate training for like separation anxiety and shit like that. So you don't want her like pooping everywhere. You don't want her like eating everything in the house. But, um, I mean, I'm still doing it regardless because like, I want to make sure. No, it's, it's still good. Honestly, it's still good. I like crate training is good. You should always do it regardless. Um, uh, Mr. Totally a penguin. Thank you for the 25 gifted subs. Thembo and W Bear, Care Bear one two zero oh, four. Thank you for the ten of the subs. Um, is cutting her coat? Wait, what the fuck are they doing to the dog? They're searing the dog's nose with the fire in the hearth. After this ceremony, the cub becomes. Oh, they don't even do anything. They just like make her smell it. Becomes one of the family. It is called Jia Sui, literally a good year. Only in such a dignified way can the two lives enjoy equality. Okay. Oh, I was watching this earlier. This Seven guy, years. this guy like breeds them professionally. Uh, and was like talking about the breed specific. Blau in your merch, yeah, I I have seen. This man is is rocking the fucking ideology look through and through. Respect, and he's looking good while doing it. Totally on board. Um. Great training is good for giving them a safe space that they know they can go to when they feel unsafe. Yeah, except she currently does not like the crate at all and does not find it to be a safe space at all. Hopefully she will, though, uh, eventually. Messi also has a massive dog. Oh, my God. Oh, this is the same type of dog that fucking, uh, uh, what's his face? Uh, Bradley Martin has. Also, Messi is kind of tiny, to be fair.
Bordeaux Mastiff. I had one growing up. Great dogs. Yeah, they fucking slobber like a motherfucker, unfortunately. Uh, name her Sakura or Finley? Uh, no, because Finley is literally the name of, uh, of, of a dog that I see every day. One of my trainers, um, his dog's name is Finley. So there's that. Okay, we got names. We'll, we'll do names in a second. Let's learn more about this breed. Here. So uh, we have... Uh I was going to do the DNA test already to see what she is. I was going to do the DNA test to see what she is, but she's sleeping. So I don't want to wake her up and like do this fucking swab. You know what I mean? This is a test for 350 breeds, types and varieties, ancestry profile, and family tree. Back to great grandparents. Find and connect with your pup's relatives. I don't know how the fuck they would do that. Like, this is a 23 and me, but for puppers. We're going to do that in a little bit. Um, the surf said that this was kind of shit, though. Oh, oh. Oh, my God. Just stretching. She just got a, you got a big stretch, dude. You got a big ass stretch in there. That isn't the 23andMe Doggo Edition? I think so. It's called Embark. I used Embark for my pity mix as a puppy. The physical stats and info they gave you ended up being insanely accurate at a year old. Wait, really? Don't do the DNA test. It will make it harder for her relatives to commit crimes without getting caught. I like how she doesn't sleep on the pillow at all. Yeah, so here's what's going on with that. Okay? Uh, if you're wondering why she's sleeping on the ground instead of on the pillow, I can tell you. It's because this is like a warm, uh, not a warm weather dog, but a cold weather dog. So she literally loves laying next to metal to just like get the, the coolness uh, off the ground. I mean, these are the types of dogs that you literally, as I showed you, uh, you, you keep outside all fucking day, every day, and they they guard your flock. You know what uh, I mean? My adult male, Dino. Here, this is, let's watch this fucking thing. This guy Dogumentary like, TV, producing the best breed documentary. Dogumentary TV. Welcome to my ranch here, and I want to introduce you to the breed and to my facility and help you better understand what the Tibetan Mastiff is all about. So come on, let's meet some of the dogs. I usually keep my dogs here in. Is that the best choice for California? Uh, no, I, I, I'm a ruthless piece of shit, and I want, uh, my, I want whichever dog I have to suffer the most in my $3 million mansion. Uh, that uh, is is uh, where the AC is always on. Um, you know, this dog is going to live a horrible life. And I, and I did that on purpose. I was specifically like, please, you know, I, I, like to, I like my animals to suffer. I'm a cruel guy. But thank you, Chatter, Andy33K, for uh, informing everybody that you, you know. You know what's good. Sort of family packs, usually one male with several females tends to keep the peace, especially during breeding season. You can keep males or females together in groups if they're not breeding dogs, but that's not the case here. So uh, we have uh, my adult male Dino with a year old female in the back here, Golden Gaia, year old female Talia, and a four year old Dolly. And sort of midday, the Tibetan Mastiff often takes a nap. They're alert uh, early evening through early morning. And then for the day, they sort of relax and chill out unless there's really something to bark about. The Tibetan Mastiff is sort of the ultimate. I feel like this guy loves Tibetan Mastiffs, man. <laughs> I mean, wh what the fuck? Look at this, bro. He's got like the, the copper painting. He's got statues, he's got pillows of him. Family guardian protection dog. Uh, 
Their protection is instinctive. It's not a trained dog. The distinction is they are not an aggressor, but they are a defender. So in other words, as long as uh, everything is status quo around the house, around the yard, they're fine, like the lion laying up on the hill. But give them something to get upset about, they're right there standing at the guard at the gate, ready to, to defend or take it on. They don't go look. I haven't, I, I don't know what to do, but like, if she, if she wants to like roam in the, in the yard, no, this is the stand your ground dog. I'm thinking about possibly, I am thinking about possibly fucking, uh, letting her roam at night outside. You know what I mean? And like, have like a separate, uh, sleeping area for her outside. Um, I haven't figured it out though. She going to kill a yote? No, not where I live, brother. Um, I don't want her getting stolen. Uh, <laughs> this dog is 150 fucking pounds when she grows up. Um, I, I, you know, this is the one, I don't think this is the type of dog that motherfuckers are trying to steal. You know what I mean? This is also, why the fuck would anybody try to steal like a mutt, like a 120 pound mutt? You know what I mean? Yeah, they steal fucking pugs and, and French bulldogs and shit like that so they can, like, very quickly sell them. And also... Hey, are you sure you've considered this years-long decision you've made? I just did 40 seconds of Googling and have concerns. <laughs> yeah. Like, it'd be weird. It'd be weird to try and steal a fucking massive dog. Oh my god, look at her. Look at her kicking. Much. It's too much. It's shit. Oh. It's sleepy time. We are not paying attention to you. Hope you know that. Man, I am not expecting... I'm not even paying attention to anything. Does she smell good? I mean, she smells like a puppy, you know? She has the very distinct puppy scent where she smells like she's laid in piss a lot. And, and because I love her, it doesn't even fucking matter. You know what I mean? This is how puppies smell. Puppies smell. I said to myself as a tiny puppy and forgot Hassan's a giant. She is not tiny at all. She's already like around 10 pounds, I think. Uh, by one month, she's 5 to 10. Uh, two months, uh, 15 to 30 pounds. A female is 10 to, 20, uh, 10 to 25 pounds. And uh, she's like, uh, I think she's two months old. So pretty sure she's around 10 to 25 pounds. So uh, I don't know. By three months, they get up to 25 to 40. By four months, they get up to 40 to th uh, 45, 30 to 45. By five months, they, by six months, they get up to 40 to 60 pounds. So... Yeah, and they don't stop growing for two years. So big breeds, uh, big breeds are different where like this breed, from what I understand, uh, they, they literally keep growing for two years. Like they're supposed to stay on puppy food for two fucking years. You can get insulated dog doors installed on the exterior walls of your house. We'll see what. I have a new fee. She's about 145. Um, my brother's dog weighs more than me. I have to be careful when it's around. 
<clears throat> I mean, she's going to be very, very well trained, so it doesn't matter. Got a Japanese Akita, and they keep growing until two years. Very stubborn breed, too. I mean, she's fucking stubborn, too. She takes a piss directly looking at me uh, in the face. She will literally, she will pee. She will get rewarded uh, for peeing in the right place. And then five minutes later, she will go up to the fucking pad and pee next to the pad. I assume because she missed or because she's a dick. I don't know. But you can see she peed on the pad correctly uh, right, right there. And this is like not even 24 hours in. So um, she's doing great. Um, she's, she's pissed and pooped. She's pooped more times, uh, on the pad than not. So, uh, obviously eventually, uh, I will move to taking her outside to pee and poop outside. Are you going to consider getting one of those mammoth edition pickup trucks? Hard to imagine you and the dog fit in that tiny Porsche. Why not? I mean, she's, uh, she's like a human size. If a human can fit in that Porsche, she can too. All giant dog breeds grow slower. That's why you need to be careful not to let them run up too many stairs or jump a lot until like 18 months. Pretty sure a hawk can pick up a 150-pound dog, especially if they engage in teamwork. Might want to second guess ever taking her out size, Sweaty. I think... <coughs> I think for we'll trouble, but they don't let trouble come to them. Sakura Gore, thank you for the 25. Get the subs. My name is... Like, that coat, look, her coat is similar to that, what you just saw. This. She kind of looks like her a little bit. My name is Richard Eichhorn. Call me Rick. Um, I'm Draki Tibetan Mastiffs. I started in this breed in 1978 uh, when I saw a picture of them in a Life magazine on rare breed dogs of the world. I had a friend who had Tibetan Terriers. I called her and said, what's up with this Tibetan Mastiff? Uh, she introduced me to the woman who brought the first dogs into the country who lives, lived about an hour from where I am now. And I uh, got my first dog from her, and that's about 20 generations ago. How was she in the car ride back? Oh, nothing. Um, she was super chill. But I think, like, guys, puppies, until they're, like, six months old... Like, especially in the first, like, first two months, three months, they're still literally learning to see. They're learning to walk. They're learning to see. Like, the first one to eight weeks is really important. They have to be by their, uh, they have to be by their mom and with a litter if, you know, if they have the opportunity to be so. Because um, that's when they, like, learn their first social uh, like their, their social conditioning comes. Oh my God. Look at her ear. Oh, stop. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. That's too much. That's too much. She's not even trying. That's the crazy thing. She's not even fucking trying. She's just the cutest little thing. Um, but yeah, they, they learn it's very formative. They start seeing things like in reacting the light and whatnot by, I think like four weeks, five weeks. So she's only a couple weeks removed from like literally being able to see things and getting off the teat by eight, uh, and then start being able to, you know, eat hard foods, uh, by eight. So I got her like a, like a all ages, uh, appropriate for puppy, like kibble. That is, uh, very, um, that is like a uh, very soft. Um, but yeah, we, I have, I have a bunch of name suggestions. We're going to get to that first, but I'm trying to, I'm trying to fucking set the vibe. Are they stubborn eaters? So from what I understand, uh, she just eats when she wants and will sometimes skip a meal or whatever. Uh, she's not like, she's not like weird at all. I mean, she, she ate dogs should not eat kibble. Well, this ain't your average kibble. Okay. So don't worry. And also, um, you know, 
it just just trust me, okay? First of all, dogs can eat fucking kibble. You're wrong. And secondly, it's not literally like Purina fucking half pigeon meat shit, okay? So, I mean, this little baby's eating uh this little baby's eating some some fine dining, okay? Some decadent ass shit. Never dreaming that I would uh, still be in this, still breeding, living full time with the dogs. Uh, Timeline's a bit off. Eyes open by two weeks, soft food, four weeks walking, six weeks weaning, six to eight weeks socializing with siblings and detachment from mother. Source raised golden retrievers for 20 plus years. Showing, judging around the world. I mean, it's been a life changing experience. It's winter time here, beginning of February. So we have the nursery. Solita. Where's your babies? Oh, we got a little little group she woke of, up uh, the whistle. of pups here that are five weeks old here with mom. Bro, she's reacting way better than me. She's reacting way harder than me. She's reacting in ways that I never could. Okay. When people say when people say like react harder, this is why I got a puppy so she could be my co-reactor uh, and, and react way harder than me than I ever could. Sort of learning how to be outside, getting socialized to the... Come on, pups. Come on, babies, let's go. Who's over here? The rest of them are sleeping right now, so we'll just have to take those two. I mean, they. she looks pretty similar to that, which is why I'm thinking, like, so maybe, we'll just maybe she two. is a... Uh... Then my facility here, my three-car garage, is my kennel building. All the dogs sleep in here at night, all the grooming, feeding... Everything goes on in here. They she doesn't are from have that the eyebrow world, thing. What do you mean? Tibet. Oh, like the little uh, white patch? Yes, she eye... does. Look. She has like the double patch above her eyebrows. We're going to do a doggy DNA anyway, but look. Look. Isolated region, both in geography and climate, in the religion and tradition of the people. And because of that, they bred true for centuries, isolated in this sort of cold mountain kingdom, uh, performing a function as a family and flock guardian. She fell, bro. She fucking fell. That's crazy. She will get up. She's so fucking goofy. She will sometimes get up. And just straight up fucking fall immediately back down. Like while she's sleeping. It's nuts. How is this a real thing, dude? I don't understand. We do not deserve dogs. Look at those little fucking legs, dude. Look at those goddamn legs. Look at those goddamn fucking paws, dude. Look at that. Oh. so soft too but yeah i mean her paws aren't that big so maybe i don't know i i feel like her paws aren't that big for the record um so maybe she's uh maybe she's mixed typically some, you'd have a like, dog i mean i know she's mixed with some but like maybe she's mixed with something that's not that big living with nomads or living at a in a courtyard in the city uh protecting the family uh, maintaining the the safety of the home of the children of the flock of sheep from wolves uh, whatever whatever their charge may be sort of evolving as a dual purpose as a stationary guard dog uh, much like some of the other mastiff breeds and also as a flock guardian uh, like the kuvas like the great pyrenees so sort of the uh, amalgamation of a mastiff breed and a mountain guardian breed a naturally evolved land race breed that uh, sort of bred true and evolved very specifically because of the the isolation and the geography and the climate of Tibet. Uh, there wasn't much coming in or going out. It really was, uh, you know, the mountain villages, uh, the snow-capped mountains, the mountain passes, uh, the low-laying valleys, and uh, the dogs were... Well, this shirt is out of control. I... All the other, all the other like 
massive stuff is so crazy that I didn't even notice. Like, what the fuck is going on with these patterns? Isolated there. And like the other Tibetan breeds, which include the Spaniel and the Terrier, um, they really uh, didn't have much option to, to crossbreed. They sort of developed a very pure race of dogs. In that evolution of the breed, um, there were different functions. You, uh, you have history documenting uh, the traditional Mastiff type, the very large, heavy, uh, more pendulous lips, more hanging skin, sizable, uh, stationary guardian. Um, these dogs would be seen at the monasteries, uh, chained up in front, often in the courtyards uh, of the- Like pendulous lips, as in like Mastiff breeds, uh, globally, will always have like incredibly droopy fucking lips. Um, that is because they're war dogs, originally. All Mastiff breeds are bred for, uh, you know, defense and for war so they have like these crazy jowls and they have a lot of extra skin and the reason for why they have that is so they don't actually if they get like stabbed or if they uh get bit by like a wolf or whatever they don't actually feel it and they can continue fighting like they literally that's that's why they have like so much loose skin you're like what the fuck is the reason for this but the reason is because like they are, it's like defensive. It's like chain mail. It's like having chain mail on your, on your skin, basically. Yeah. Plus 100 defense. The They're wealthier armored. people in the cities of Tibet. Um, whereas a, uh, a more athletic. What makes a dog breed pure? Dude, I don't fucking know. I don't give a shit about any of this stuff. I'm just looking at this because like. This guy very clearly knows about the history of this breed. But, I mean, I think it's incest for the most part, right? It's just like they they literally will incestuously fucking breed certain traits for years and years and years with the hopes that, like, they end up uh, getting these, like, designer traits. But, I mean, what we're talking about with, like, this type of breed on, like, fucking French Bulldogs or whatever is that a lot of these breeds are... are a lot of these breeds are bred for a thousand fucking years already, so it doesn't even matter at that point. Like, which is why they, like, like the Inu family of dogs are dogs that have been bred for, like, thousands of years. So at that point, it doesn't, it, it doesn't even matter. You know what I mean? Like, they're very healthy. Whereas, um... Whereas, like, designer dogs that are bred to be, like, small and, like, have that busted-ass nose and shit, uh, those dogs will have a lot of health complications. Like, literally, similar to, like, human. Uh, like, dogs that are bred for aesthetic reasons and for, like, consumer uh, choices, like designer dogs, will usually have, like, really busted-ass shit. Like, they can't breathe. Uh, they have a lot of like snout problems. They end up having cancer, shit like that. Whereas, aren't all Inus literally from like four families because of World War II? I did not know that. But whereas, like uh, dogs that were bred for you know guardianship, dogs that were bred for hunting, uh, and and uh, dogs like that, they are uh, dogs that have been bred for like thousands of years for a particular purpose. Don't actually get, uh, don't actually have that many uh, complications. Leaner, perhaps even a little meaner, more guardian type, would be moving with the nomads, would be a little more efficient in its physiology, not quite as heavy, um, perhaps a little more confrontational with predators. And so you have this duality, and very often the two types would be regularly crossed uh, to, to maintain the guardian ability and the physical. I love that. Why is this guy a mix of Tiger King and Papa John? Literally a correct assessment. ability of the nomadic type along with the size and the presence and the type and the, the heft that came along with the Mastiff type. So that's still, uh, still manifested in today's dog and the subject of tremendous controversy within the breed because you have people that are attracted to the breed for one type or the other and there's many who sort of uh, blend the types to, uh, to maintain that same balance that was achieved in Tibet. The, the term Tibetan Mastiff was only applied once Westerners discovered the breed uh, a couple centuries ago uh, because it was the, the massive breed 
of Tibet, the old word for massive is mastiff. So it was known as the mastiff of Tibet, the great dog of Tibet. I can't tell if he's like making this part up, but he seems so confident that like, I'm just, I'm just going with it. But it also, doesn't that literally sound like something that uh, someone would make up? Like, it just sounds like, it sounds fake. It's probably not, because, like, this guy knows what he's talking about, clearly. Nobody, nobody puts that shirt on. Nobody puts that shirt on when they wake up in the morning to talk about fucking anything that is their specialty without having the confidence of knowing every little thing about this breed. You know what I mean? Like... Like this man put this Dan Flash's ass shirt on because he was like, "I'm this is my this is my Mastiff talking shirt." Okay, I know, I know what the fuck is good. I don't give a fuck what I'm wearing. No man bears the weight of that shirt without knowing exactly. <laughs> Mastiff in Old Tibetan means suck tongue. That uh, in in their native land they were known as the Doki. Doki meaning tied dog or guard dog. Um, as they, they, they are one of the original breeds from which many of our present-day working dogs descend. Uh, certainly the flock guardian breeds, also the St. Bernard, uh, the Chow Chow. Um, there is... Bro, these things are so funny looking, but apparently they're so aggressive. Like, I had no idea. Like, I thought that these, these things were so fucking cute. And then uh, I found out that they are one of the most aggressive fucking breeds. Like, they're like Dalmatians. Dalmatians are also apparently very aggressive. Like, you think, you would think that they'd be, like, cute as fuck. And, like, you know, you got the 101 Dalmatians. Like, you, you, you think that they are, like, you know, beautiful, wonderful dogs. You have them at the fucking... Uh, you know, in the old days, like, the meme was that, like, every fire department had a Dalmatian. That sort of shit. No, man. They are fucking aggro as hell. My grandparents had one growing up, so we could never go over there. And then, of course, they got a Dalmatian who was a holy terror because they never got him properly trained. Yeah. Speculation, various theories. My neighbors had a chow chow, and I thought that thing was going to break the fence and kill me eventually. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you. Guys, like, you can't get owned by a chow chow. They are not that big. Okay, you could just kick the fucking thing. Like, also, mastiff apparently means tamed from Old French, uh, and then from Latin, he's lying. Theories of if the actual mastiff breeds came from them, or if they evolved simultaneously, because of the geography and the isolation, uh, it it really bred a dog that was uh, very adept at protection in high altitude and cold climates. You're talking about a, a geography from 8 to 10 to 15,000 feet, uh, even higher. Uh, it was a dog that had a very heavy coat, uh, that ha had a slower metabolism so it could survive on less. Uh, it was a stationary guard that would be tied during the... This guy is literally the average homosexual dog breeder and exhibitor in America. Source, I show dogs, and this type of people are everywhere, lol, shirt and all. <laughs> Today, funny. it would be let loose at night, um, and it was an independent thinker. So Bro, this fucking dog looks like a people, lion. Not with people. Like, straight uh, up. A very, a very important distinction for people today who are looking for a guardian breed. This is a dog that thinks on its own, that's an instinctive guardian, uh, that's not a, a trained guardian like a Doberman or a Rottweiler or a German Shepherd would be. This dog says, point me in the direction, show me what you want me to guard, now go to bed and let me do it. And uh, that's what they were prized for in Tibet uh, all night long. For those of you saying this is a less uh, redneck version of Joey, uh, Joe Exotic, yes, this is Joe Exotic in California. He's a California guy. Okay, he will mention it, or he did mention it in the video already. This is the Joe Exotic of California, 100%. Same vibes, but just California coded, so like a little bit more liberal. Long, barking, sounding the alarm, keeping the predators away, letting everybody know that they were on guard and no one should come there. And that remains true today. If I leave my dogs out all night long, they will sound the alarm all night long. They're not barking at anything. They're sort of saying, hear ye, hear ye, all is well, stay away, don't come here, don't mess with me. And then once the sun comes up, 
they basically sleep for the day. I live in the high desert mountains uh, of Southern California at about 4,000 feet. Yeah, there you there go. There are predators here. Um, uh, there are birds. Are you going to keep his coat long like a lion? Her coat? <coughs> Probably not. <coughs> I want to make sure that she's like comfy first. I don't give a shit about like. Of prey. Um, I have to keep some of my puppy runs covered, especially when the pups are young, because there's big owls, there's hawks. Have you seen what a Caucasian Shepherd puppy looks like? The markings are pretty similar. Brother, of course I know what a Caucasian Shepherd puppy looks like. I'm literally fucking Turkish. Where do you think the Caucasian Shepherds come from? Like, the fuck? Those are... Those are like, this is literally like uh Kongal, Caucasian Shepherd. Like these are all fucking breeds that are um like they are they are like the Caucasus region. So Armenia, Azerbaijan, Russia. The Caucasus, man. The Caucasus isn't Turkey. I know, but like this breed, the Caucasian Shepherd is literally the I, I, identical breed to Kongals. Like, they're very similar to Kongal. The Kongal is more lab-like than a Caucasian Shepherd. The Caucasian Shepherd is, like, specifically has, like, a longer coat, but they're very similar. And it's from that area here. This is a Caucasian Shepherd. And no, you know why I know she's not a Caucasian Shepherd? Look at her tail. Caucasian Shepherds have a tail that goes down and sloops like that. She has a tail that swirls up. So, no. Tibetan Mastiffs uh, will have a tail that, like, uh, goes up and swirls up. Um... And I think her face is shorter, too. Caucasian Shepherds have, like, more uh, elongated uh, nose, looking more wolf-like, whereas um, she has not, like, a very long nose, as you can see from here. Never have a long-haired dog shaved? Wait, why? Never shave her, please. Definitely don't shave her. Shaving a long hair is a big no-no. Please never do that. Wait, what? Bro, I haven't even groomed this dog yet, and motherfuckers are already, like, upset. It ruins their coats? I don't even know, but... I won't do anything without asking, a consulting a professional, okay? I haven't seen any eagles, but um, I do know that a neighbor lost a young pup to a, you know, what we think was a big barn owl. Um, there are packs of coyotes that are just outside my property at night. They don't come here because, you know, there's what other the places. Fuck? There's nothing. Bro, this thing is, is devastating. This thing looks lethal, dog. Just full black. You don't see this thing at night, dude. Here for them to eat. And you just see the eyes. You, eh, oh, here's one thing I did learn about Tibet Massives. Uh, they are very agile and they're very quiet. Like, for 150 fucking pounds, they're incredibly quiet. <laughs> and so they will, like, run up to you, run up behind you without you fucking realizing, and then bark. There's a whole lot of trouble if they do come here. Well, in Tibet, um, you, you know, especially with the nomadic lifestyle, you had, uh, you had herdsmen with horses, with goats, with sheep, um, and they're the two main predators uh, in Tibet would have been the Tibetan wolf and as well as the snow leopard. And the first uh, female that I got back in 1979, um, her father was 11 years old, a dog named Kalu, the very first dog registered in the United States. Kalu uh, had a very hoarse sounding bark from an encounter with a snow leopard where his vocal box was punctured and so he what sort of had fuck? a horse uh, sounding bark all of his life from that encounter. Bro, this motherfucker got a dog. The first dog that he brought into the country was a dog that fought a snow leopard and survived. That is bananas, dude. 
the physical appearance of the Tibetan Look mastiff at this is sort of thing. like the same purpose as a lion in Africa. Uh, with the big mane, it's sort of that king of the beast. And in the animal kingdom, the bigger the appearance, the bigger they puff themselves up, uh, the more intimidating they are. So the, the mane uh, served a dual purpose. Well, actually more purposes. It was Did insulation. I I uh, it that. also served uh, to make the dogs appear larger and more fierce. And it also was a barrier with the loose skin. If a predator did get a hold uh, in a battle, the Tibetan Mastiff would have an advantage because there was a lot of loose skin and a lot of hair so that they uh, had a little extra protection. Add to that the traditional red yak collar called the Kikor that they often put on the Tibetan Mastiff both to be able to identify them at distance and to distinguish them from the wolf and also for ceremonial purposes but also uh, that that Tibetan collar gave them a lot of insula additional insulation, sort of like a spike collar would be used on some of the bully breeds. You know, this dog has been sort of classified as one of the flock guardian breeds. Uh, I would say it's more ancestral to the flock guardian breeds. Uh, for example, I, I do get people often who call me uh, saying, you know, uh, you know, I've got a flock of sheep or I've got a wolf problem or I've got, you know, to be honest, very often I refer them to a different breed. The Tibetan Mastiff is what I'd call a sort of a home or a ranch or a farm protector. They are more involved with people than some of the other livestock breeds who would just as soon be with the sheep as ever see another person. Uh, the Tibetan Mastiff wants to touch base with the people, with the home, oversee the the corrals, oversee the fields, oversee the whole thing, and to and but to remain around the home and the family. They're not a, a breed that excels at, for example, being raised with the flock, like you would see with the Great Pyrenees or a Kuvas or even one of the Avcharka breeds. Uh, you know, if you have a wolf or predator problem. I'd suggest going to another breed. Uh, if you've got a big ranch or a farm or some livestock that you want an overseer who's going to sort of be the foreman and oversee the whole thing, uh, the Tibetan Mastiff is the right breed. I've been involved with the breed since 1978 and I have to say that it, it has gone to places I never imagined. Uh, for the first 20 Everybody fucking calm down. I had the I I the the camera's propped next to the goddamn mini fridge, okay? So yes, when I move the mini fridge, the camera moves a little bit. <clears throat> Ten thousand percent didn't expect to be learning about an actual insane amount of a specific dog, but here I am. It's gonna be really funny when I do the DNA test and we find out that like she's not even one percent Tibetan Mastiff. While I'm over here learning so much about this fucking breed, which, I mean, it doesn't matter. I love her, and she's incredible, but. I don't give a shit about um, what breed she is. She's fucking awesome. Yeah. And uh, hopefully she will grow to be very large. I bought a dog that said to be a hound. It got tested. It was 1% bloodhound mix. Going to be like a white person claiming native ancestry. Yeah, but like I don't, it's a dog and I don't care. You know what I mean? I like, I love her already. Many years, we sort of struggled to get new bloodlines in, to get any sort of support, to get recognition for people to know what the breed was. Uh, it wasn't until 2000 five that the breed went into the AKC miscellaneous group and it was fully recognized just 10 years ago in 2007. Um, I was a part of the committee that helped to draft the standard uh, for AKC recognition and I've been involved with it all along. Um, the breed started out with very few imports coming in uh, out of some of the outlying areas because Tibet was closed. Tibet was behind the red curtain of China. Uh, it wasn't until the last maybe 10 years that Tibet has really opened up to visitors. We've been able to see what's in there. Uh, China became a big player in the breed, uh, much to my surprise and everyone else's surprise. Um, 
probably around 2004, 2005, uh, suddenly there were hundreds of examples of the breed in China, seemingly out of nowhere. Well, what we didn't realize was that you know, during that 50, 60 year period when Tibet and China were closed, a lot of the dogs were still there and reproducing uh, in the Tibetan regions and some of the southern regions of China with the Tibetan populations that were there. And it was a uh, sort of a shock to the Tibetan Mastiff world, but at the same time, very encouraging because suddenly here were a lot of new bloodlines that were available. So the breed was no longer in danger of extinction, no longer had to rely on uh, maybe substandard examples with more or less Tibetan Mastiff blood from India, Bhutan, Nepal, all the outlying areas where the dogs were first exported uh, to Europe and the United States in the 1970s and 80s. I love her so, so much. So this was this has been no a idea. real boost for for the breed, which now uh, has really legitimately reclaimed its position in the dog world. Hey, come on in and meet the puppies. Hey, pup, pup. What's going on? Hey, you guys. You don't get a wet nose on the lens. They say, "What have you got? You must have a treat for us." <laughs> this boy here is probably staying with us since he's already been named. Mm -hmm. This girl's going to Norway next week and this boy is probably going to Mexico. Look, you do you see their tails? They droop up words like that. Usually if the, if they're if they're staying in the US, they can leave at 8 9 weeks. Uh Usually, usually nine to ten weeks if they're going to be shipped. They're going to be picked up eight to nine weeks. If they're going overseas, they've got to be vaccinated to three months with rabies and then wait 30 days before they go. So that's why these big puppies are here. <laughs> because the breed evolved naturally in Tibet, uh, Mother Nature is sort of the harshest of breeders. Um, you know, if a dog was not healthy, could not survive and thrive to reproduce, it often didn't. So, uh, I love how chunky this dude is. I mean, she's a chunky girl or a chunky boy, but he's also a chunky guy running alongside uh, her. As a breed, it is a relatively healthy breed. Give her a snow pile one day, please. Be the greatest content ever. Oh yeah, no, don't worry. I I want to try and travel with her. Um, I, I definitely want to try and travel with her before, uh, she gets too big, but I do want to do that. I definitely want her to like, uh, you know, experience snow and the light as a result of that land race evolution and mother nature. Um, you do see some of the same issues you see in other breeds, but not to the same degree. Um, you know, we have. From what I understand, these dogs have hip dysplasia, like they can have front leg issues or back leg problems and eye sight issues because their eyes are so droopy. A very low incidence of hip or elbow dysplasia, uh, very few eye problems. Uh, older dogs uh, will die of a cancer or a heart problem or some sort of glandular problem or... No, I didn't pre-watch. I only watched it up to like here, but the rest of it, I just, I read a lot. There, there's nothing that is a breed-wide problem like you see in other breeds. Um, and it's a healthier breed, especially for a larger breed. They do go 11 to 14 years. Um, you know, some of the first dogs may go at 9 or 10 years from, from a cancer or uh, some other, you know, ailment. But you'll also have some of uh, the, I've heard of dogs 15 and 16 years of age living. You know, sort of pampered dogs that have had the advantage of Western food and medicine and care. I've been fortunate enough to become a judge for the breed because of my experience in all the years. And um, the breed standard is very clear about what makes an ideal Tibetan Mastiff. Uh, it needs to be a large, imposing dog. And uh, when I say large, it's not a giant breed. As some of the giant breeds go, there are dogs that are much taller and dogs that are much heavier. But this is a very large, imposing breed, and that size is amplified by the coat. Uh, you get a, an older male in a colder climate that's a large dog, that coat's going to make him look 50 pounds heavier. You know, sometimes, um, you know, my big males that you saw today. Your house is going to be so full of hair. No, man. They have two different coats of hair. They have, like, human-style hair, and then they have regular fur. So 
the regular fur sheds and and when it sheds twice a year apparently maximum but then that's it you're like fine with uh weekly grooming Day all range between 130 and 150 pounds. Like, dude, this guy is fucking terrifying. This is like a, this is an imposing presence. Dude. But people a, will this... say, oh, wow, that dog must be 200 pounds just because it has such an imposing look, which helped a lot with their function in Tibet. Uh, you look for a very natural dog, not anything overdone. It's got to be balanced because you want to keep in mind what the breed was used for in Tibet. It had to survive in very extreme conditions. It had to be an athlete. So you have a balance of muscle, of power, of bone structure, of sizable head, of harsh coat. Um, all those things evolved to help it perform its function and to survive in the uh, extreme environment. And those things are still maintained and prized today. When understanding the temperament of the Tibetan Mastiff, first and foremost, you have to realize that it is a dog that evolved to work instead of people, not with people. So I describe that as maybe about 20% cat. It's a breed that's smart, one of the smartest breeds, but it's more intuitive intelligence, not behavioral intelligence. You know, you throw a dog, you throw a, a, a ball for a Tibetan Mastiff, second time it's going to go, you threw it, you go get it. Either that or I'm going to get it or chew it up. Another family group I have here, I have... We'll see about that. I don't like that as far as uh, dogs goes. I saw I got a cat dog. Okay, first of all, guys... It, it, the, the way that, the way that these things work, oftentimes, you know, uh, dog qualities are compared to cats when, uh, you want to talk about the personality of a dog and how, how intelligent the dog is or how independent the dog is. And it's the exact opposite for cats. Cats will also, a cat, cats will also be compared to dogs specific breeds of cats when the cat is like um more loving more kind more polite you know just like qualities that you would want it's normal I have a four-year-old dolly dolly is a daughter of my big boy leo who you met earlier Nice solid black color, which is the original dominant color in the breed. Then I have Dino, who uh, one of my stud dogs. He's just come back from doing some stud work, so he's a little lean right now. But he's making up for it by uh, eating double. Hey, Dino. Hey, girls. Talia. Then this red girl is Talia. She's one year old. She's uh, going to be sort of my future show prospect. She and Bravo are half brother, half sister, and uh, she just got that little show spark. Talia, come on, Talia, Gaia, come on, Gaia. He's also training. He's also talking about purebreds. If your dog is mixed, anything can happen. Yeah, one hundred percent. The light gold girl here is Gaia. 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 Guy is a year old also. Um, I did a breeder trade. One of my friends, uh, Himat Singh from India, he, uh, he has uh, some dogs that are sort of distantly related to mine. We traded puppies She's this dreaming. year. It's sort of a way that breeders keep uh, some genetic diversity. Oh my, and, God. Uh, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. She's so fucking cute, I'm gonna die. While being able to maintain the integrity of the breed and the top quality. Gaia, come here Gaia, come on. She woke up with the whistles. Oh no. Go back. Go back to sleep. Go back to sleep. Yeah. Good job. Good girl. Come on over here. Gaia. Come on, Gaia. Come on, Gaia. Come on, Dolly. You know, you, you notice when we were out in the yard with my dogs, you know, I call them three, four, five times. They acknowledge that I'm calling them, but they're like, I know you're going to put me back. I've got other things I need to do. I need to check the boundaries. Uh -oh. I need to pee on everything. I've got a higher calling. So the, the temperament is stable. Um, they're not necessarily a one-person dog. They're more of a one-family, a one-yard, a one-flock dog. 
they want to belong. They want to know what am I supposed to protect? How are things supposed to be? What's the status quo? Who's allowed? Who's not? And point me in the direction and I'll do it. And let me do it by myself. They should be much more of a guard on their home turf, whether it's with the flock of I wanted her to, I, I, every time she wakes up, I immediately put her on the pad because like I want her to, because you know, you never know when she's going to poop, right? But she's such a little baby. She's like way too young to be like properly potty trained. Obviously, these are like the beginning stages of potty training. Um, eventually, I'll start potty training her by um, by taking her outside. But um, at this stage, she's like I said, she's too young. So she doesn't even get it. So she just lays down on the fucking pad. Oh my gosh, she's playing with the toys. Oh, this is, what a treat. What a treat that is. Little yawn, wake up from the nap. And then play with the toys a little bit. dying there you go enhanced sheep the chickens the the kids in the yard or just you know their basic neighborhood backyard uh, they should be a guardian there when you take them off the property whether it's to the park to a dog show whatever they're much more relaxed because uh, and you know, it's like, well, okay, I'm off duty here. I guess I can enjoy wherever we are. Um, they're not a dog, for example, that you could tell to attack a stranger when you're off property. Again, they are a defender, but not an aggressor. You don't see them going out, causing trouble. Why the fuck would anybody want to do that, by the way? You got to be a real freak to be like, yo, go out and attack someone. But I guess that's like, you know, people that get like Belgian Malinois, you know what I mean? Where they're like, they want to, they want like a military style dog. They're like, this is not a cop dog is uh, what he's saying. He's saying this is not an American coded dog. Looking for trouble, but they stand their ground and say, don't cross this line. You know, if you've got other breeds, get the dog as a puppy and raise them with those other breeds so that they establish their order. They're very reliable with other animals. Um, I always recommend that they have a canine companion just because they relate to another dog differently than they do to a person. I do recommend for the average owner who's got a yard and a family to have an opposite sex companion. So if you want that big male puppy because you just love the breed and want a big male, then get an opposite set. Get a either a Tibetan Mastiff female as a companion or, you know, a Labrador female or something more sizable, a large mixed breed Malibute, uh, something that is large enough to interact and exercise with the Tibetan Mastiff because, uh, you know, they're a, a physical breed. And yeah, good thing I have uh, a lot of... Uh a lot of friends with dogs that are that size. Oh, wait, just kidding. The oh, fuck? I got Fiona, who's like a tiny little baby. Uh, we got Mika, who is also a tiny little baby. Mika is like, both Mika and Fiona are the size of this puppy right now. Like, pretty much. They're like a little bit larger. Um, uh, Myung has Nobby, which is uh, the size of a chicken. Small, much smaller than a chicken, actually. What am I talking about? The size of a chick. Farley is already much smaller than this dog. Um, wait, Fiona isn't big? I mean, to me, she doesn't seem that big. She's bigger than Mika, but... And no, Fiona has not met the puppy yet. No one has met the puppy because I'm, I'm keeping her away from other dogs for the time being because I want to make sure that, uh, you know, she's fine. Like, she hasn't been vaccinated yet. Oh, she's playing with the other toy now. She got so many toys. She got so many fucking toys. Dude, this, this dog is so fucking spoiled, dude. But she deserves the world. They enjoy roughhousing and, and having a buddy. Um, you know, a nice, sizable yard for the dogs to run in and play in. Um, 
They're not a good apartment or condo dog at all. Uh, they are not particularly good in hot, humid climates. They can take heat as long as they have shade and cold water. They can take wet and cold, but uh, it's the combination of heat and humidity that is exactly opposite of the cold, arid, dry climate of Tibet that really is a problem for their coat, ear infection. Yeah, uh, California is dry heat, so at least it's not like humid. That's a big one, but ultimately it doesn't even matter because, uh, you know, you can be indoors all day during the day. And if I, you know, let her loose outside, it's going to be at night. So infections, skin infections, uh, lethargy, uh, not thriving, shortened lifespan if they're, if they're in a tropical climate. Uh, the type of home I look for is, first and foremost, someone with large dog experience. This is not a starter breed. This is an extremely intelligent breed that will be running you if you don't run them. They need an alpha owner who has large breed experience. Uh, they need a good size yard. It doesn't have to be a large yard. It can be a normal uh, suburb yard, uh, six foot fencing minimum. Um, you want to make sure it's sturdy. Uh, because, you know, they're, they're a powerful breed. They can go over, under, around, and through just about any fence. You, you want a family that, that knows and appreciates a large breed, an independent breed, and who can stay a step ahead of them uh, because the Tibetan Mastiff wants boundaries. Once you give it that boundary, it's a great dog, and it's not going to be a problem. You're going to have to call Murad a lot to discipline this dog? Are you fucking kidding me? Dude, I had a big breed. I had a big pit bull. I know how to fucking discipline a dog. Uh, Murad, on the other hand, is a fucking baby, okay? <clears throat> I mean, I think he did a really good job of, of training Fiona, but... Problematic dog with behavior. But you want to socialize it early, um, socialize it to the people and places you expect it to go, and, um, you know, then it will, it will uh, thrive thrive in that environment that, that, that makes up your life. Some people say, why this breed? Why did you get involved? I liked something that was rare, something that was exotic. Uh, I wanted a place that I could make a difference. And there was only about 100 dogs, 100 Tibetan Mastiffs in the United States when I got involved in 1978. Um, what makes me stay with the breed? They're, they're, they're such individuals. They have such character. Um, they really are sort of an ultimate companion. Um, you know, I like the fact that they're independent. I like that they've got their own mind and do their own thing. Uh, you know, I can rely on the fact that they're independent, and I like that. They're, 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 they're not going to behave the oh. way I want them to necessarily, oh. but I oh. appreciate the, the character and the personality that they have. And for an individual or a family that wants a very loyal and reliable, large, healthy breed that has some experience that lives in She's a looking up at me uh, like what the fuck's this guy moderate doing moderate to colder climate preferably um, this this can really be a, a special dog but this is a large breed it's 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 something that requires um, a large car a large crate uh, larger bags of food everything is is big sized it's not like having a small companion dog that sleeps on the couch um, they're going to want to be an indoor and outdoor dog they're going to want to know what's going on they're not a dog to be left in the house when you leave they're a dog that should be outside to guard the place because if not they're going to go through the screen or the door or the window to get out if there's a threat and you're not home to let them out so it's just consider the the strength the character um, and the personality of the breed, and if it if it's what you're looking for, it can be a fantastic dog. Um, but you have to, you know, choose the right dog for the right situation, and be sure you're you're the right owner. Bro, she's fucking sleeping all day because she literally did not sleep at night. Okay. It's crazy to me that this demon slept all day. What is this all about living with Tibetan Mastiffs? Documentary TV? There's more? What the fuck? Safe. They can be a good pet if you're well prepared for uh, 
a dog. Okay, well, there's a lot of documentaries on this dog, but I think we got enough. Okay. Um, I think we've seen enough. I think it's now time to name her. Now that you got like the vibes a little bit, um, I'm not going to do the DNA test yet because she's like very clearly not awake. I mean, I guess we could, I don't know how long it bro picked a weird fixation. Um, I guess we could try the DNA test. I just don't know how it works. Okay. Here's the DNA test. This is some fucking embark shit. I don't know. Um, the veterinarian developed dog DNA test. Not an ad, by the way. You get it out, and it's got this like cool, you know, gene looking uh, aesthetic. And behind it, it says. Embark, thank you for joining family, scientists, and veterinarians around the world working to combat preventable diseases in dogs. I guess they're working to combat preventable diseases in dogs. The world leader in canine genetics. Unleash your dog's story. Okay, so first you got to go and activate it which I have a unique uh, code to activate with. Hold on one second. I'm going to do that real quick. Okay. One moment while I do that. Please don't call her Rizzo. That's the name of the mistress that ripped my family apart. <clears throat> Embarkvet.com. Activate. Okay. Let's do it. I, um, I have to create an account immediately. Okay. Okay. You consent to your dog's story being shared? No. What's your dog's name? Oh, shit. We got to fucking do the dog's name first. Um, fuck, should we do the name first, I guess? All right, fuck it. Let's do the Okay, let's do the dog's uh let's let's do the name first. Okay, so Okay. Folks, ladies and gentlemen, it is now time. We are going to be We are now officially embarking upon a journey. Before we end up Doing the DNA test, I've decided that I will help, that I will get help from chat on perhaps one of the most important decisions of my life, naming this puppy. That's right. First and foremost... What are the qualities of this puppy? Just kidding. We're not even going to do the qualities of the puppy. We're just going to we're just going to dive right into it. Here's what I won't be naming the puppy. The top of the hour ad break. That's right. Because at the top of the hour there's a 3 minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with a Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. All the unsubscribed will have no say in this naming convention and this process. Unfortunately, because they will be too busy watching ads. Here's a three minute ad break now. If you have a Twitch Prime, it's free, by the way. You can just avoid those ads that way. Or you can get gifted a sub if you're lucky. Here's the three minute ad break now. Okay.
So, here are the names that I like. In no particular order. Funduk means hazelnut in Turkish. Aslan means lion in Turkish. Bear. Pretty self-explanatory, that one. Kuma. Which I think is Kuma bear in Japanese. And last but not least, Big Bertha. These are the names that I like for this dog. Unfortunately, a lot of these names sound a lot like a lot of these names unfortunately sound a lot like uh, male names except for Big Bertha and I guess maybe uh, Kuma. So, first and foremost, before we put these up for polling, Kaya is what I said I wanted to name my child one day. Kaya, which means rock in Turkish. But it's also another male name. <coughs> so, what are we thinking? Name her Nico Robin. Okay. 12 poll is max five, so put a top five before. Okay. What can be eliminated from this list? Write the name that you think should be eliminated from this list. Because right now we have six. And then we will put it up to a poll. Do not name her Big Bertha. Yeah, I don't think she's a Big Bertha. I'm going to be honest. A lot of Big Berthas in the chat. Shichi Bukai Bartholomew Kuma. Yeah, that's not what we're doing. Don't name her Bear. Bear, please. You don't want to, her to be named Bear. Big Bertha is my mom's name. You should know this already. I do, but she likes it. She likes that I have. So, two things that I like. Oh, she's waking up. Uh-oh. Two things that I like, okay? One. I like having a juxtaposition. Like, I like having like a, like a tiny dog name for a massive dog. So Big Bertha, I don't really like all that much. Okay. I like having, you know, like I had a pit bull named Fish. I like naming a dog a different thing. It's not a dog. You know what I mean? But also, the thing is, she does look like a bear and she does look like a lion. So I don't know.
Akainu because she will take your. Okay, dude. Name her Zaza Smoka. Okay, I'm realize I'm beginning to realize that this might have been a mistake to ask Twitch chat what to name my fucking dog. Ursa means bear, a totally awesome name. What about Nizumi, which means mouse in Japanese? It doesn't have to be Japanese, you fucking weebs. What kind of goddamn community have I cultivated? I like the name Kuma, but goddamn it, dude. A lot of you are uh, a lot of you are fucking unbearable weebs, and it shows. You know what I mean? What is fade in Turkish again? Sounded like a pretty sick name when you said it before. Kismet. Kismet. Dude, if you call her in public and say, come here, Coomer, do not name your dog Coomer, man. I never said that I was going to name her Coomer. You're the one who made that up. I do like Aslan because it sounds like Azan. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Kuma is more masculine. Ursa feels better, to be honest. So, I don't know. Thoughts on Peanut? No. Because she's too dark to be a Peanut. A Peanut is like a lighter nut. Almond. Could be... How about oh yeah no we're not gonna do that. Coda means little bear, friend, ally. Oslan was used in Narnia too cliche, bitch. Before Narnia, Oslan was used in Turkish, the language. Okay, Americans be like, bro, I don't get it. Like you're you're gonna name your fucking dog after something in Narnia? It's like no, I'm gonna name my fucking dog after a Turkish word. From the language that I learned first. But a lot of people don't like that. Because they think it's, you know, cheesy maybe. Make sure it's a name that is easily recognizable for the dog. So don't do something like sound something you say often. Name it Kiddy, Cat and Turkish, just for the lulls. That's not bad. Badem means almond in Turkish. I don't know. This is literally like, I was so on the money with... I was so on the money with, uh, with Fish, and I was so, like, ready to name her Bear... And then everyone in my uh, bear in Turkish is Ayu. And no, I don't like that as a name anyway. Um, but everyone in my family was like, no, that's crazy. That's crazy. I can't believe you just like, uh, you want to name her bear. You want to name her bear. It's like everyone fucking shit on it. So now I don't know. But I wanted to name her bear. All right, well, we'll see. I have veto power, but I guess uh, we'll eliminate uh, we'll we'll eliminate Big Bertha from this, and we'll we'll do it like this. We'll put these together. Let's do it. Let's put these names in a fucking poll. I'll start it right now. 
and we'll see what Twitch chat has to say. Puppy name poll is up. Vote on it. We have number one, Funduk, which is hazelnut. Number two, Aslan, which is lion in Turkish. Number three, bear. And number four, Kuma. And number five, Kaya, which means rock. And it seems like everybody loves Kaya, which is ironic because that's what I wanted to name uh, my, you know, child in the future. So I don't know why the fuck everyone is jumping off of that. You're taking away my. Uh, you're you're using, like I've said this on, I've said this before. Like I I, I want to name my child Kaya. Which I shouldn't have made an option, I realize. Okay, it seems like Kaya is the insanely popular option here. Holy fuck, dude. Kaya is at 48% with 6,000 votes. Kuma is number two with 2,899 votes. Bear is at third place and like losing out to Aslan. And Fundak Hazelnut is the last one at 7%. Kaya sounds more feminine than others. Ironic because Kaya means a rock and it's like usually a, a, a male name, but. Are we going to do rank choice voting for this? Yeah, I think so. To be honest, I do like Kaya as a name. I said I wanted to do that. So, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. And it literally has almost 50% of the votes. If Kaya gets over 50%, there is no runoff. And it's already at 49%. Out of all of these names, Kaya has almost 50% of the votes. I still have veto power, but overwhelmingly, Chad is deciding to vote Kaya here, it seems. Like, the second is not even up for consideration at this point. 50% of the votes have said, and keep in mind, you still have time. This might be the highest performing poll I've ever conducted on this channel. We even have a fucking hype train going on on, the, on top of that. Eight thousand votes at fifty percent. Kaya is number one. At twenty-two percent, we have Kuma, which means bear in Japanese. At number two, with three thousand seven hundred and fifty-three votes, number three is bear, or number three is Aslan, with one thousand seven hundred and ninety-four votes, and bear at ten percent is number four. And Funduk has been eliminated at this point, basically. Caller Lucy or Hazel, Dr. Mike's Mastiff is named Bear. See, 
Uh, I'm going to pause this here for a second. And I need to explain something to you. I can't begin to tell you how little I give a shit about what Dr. Mike, what kind of dog Dr. Mike has and what kind of name that Dr. Mike has named his uh, dog, okay? I don't know why you keep bringing this up. Like, you know how many fucking YouTubers are out there? Are you insane? Like, who the, half of this chat doesn't even know who the fuck Dr. Mike is. What do you mean? Like, I think it's funny to, to, oh shit. Kaya is over officially 51% of the votes. Uh, it seems like, uh, it, Kaya has it. Ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, the Kaya's, the Kaya vote is so overwhelming at 8,888 votes so far at 51%. With Kuma sitting in second place. That it seems to be avoiding a runoff. Uh. Kai is still gaining prominence with 9,000 votes. Oh, my Lord. Folks. With 9,140 votes now, it seems the Kaya is going to win this election. Look at this little thing, dude. She doesn't even know it yet. But 40,000 individuals are in this chat deciding what her name will be and what she will be responding to for years to come. Do you like Kaya as the name? I like that name so much. I wanted to name my firstborn that name. But you know what? She is basically my fur child. So why not? We are Kaya Higa. That's funny. Can chat name your firstborn? Sure. Are you going to name your kid Kuma now? Maybe. Kaya doesn't just mean a rock. It means a boulder, actually. Which she does have an imposing presence. Not yet, but she will. At 52% of the vote. With 9,572 votes. This is like a small precinct. This is like the... More people have voted in this than, like, a local vote at this point. We have a stadium filled with people, and it's almost 10,000 of you have chosen Kaya. Folks. It seems like Kaya has it as the voting is closing. As the hype train reaches 100% at five, level five, and as the polls close at 52%, Kaya almost at Kaya is the name Kaya, rock or boulder in Turkish, now has. Let me just like zoom into her a little bit. The name Kaya with over 10,000 votes. 
with over 10,000 votes, is the clear winner. At 10,146 votes, the name Kaya, the Turkish name for Boulder, has it. In second place, we have 20 at 22% with 4,347 votes, Kuma, which is bear for Japanese. Bear in Japanese. And at third place is Aslan, Aslan, or Lion in Turkish, at 10% of the vote with 1,955. In third in fourth place, we have Bear, which is Bear in English, with 9% of the vote with 1,000. 744 votes and at last but not least well I guess least for you guys was Funduk which is hazelnut in Turkish with 1,167 votes ladies and gentlemen with 52% of the votes this is a democracy after all Kaya has it Although I originally said uh, in a uh, TikTok that I believe went viral that I would name my firstborn Kaya, it seems to me like it seems to me like this little fur baby is going to steal that name. Kayakuma, Boulder Bear, please? Maybe. <coughs> there it is. Kaya Piker. Now, we embark upon the embark dog DNA thing that I was going to do. Date of adoption was what? Oh, four. Date of adoption. Date of birth was four. seven. We're going to do it on March 1st. One. Oh, not March 1st. February. I guess February 27th would be the first week. So that's 27th. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven. Eight. There it is. It's an estimated birthday. Why did they want to know where the dog lives and shit? I don't really understand. No. Do you have pet insurance? No, I don't. No, I don't have a primary vet clinic. What is happening here? None of these things are important for... I'm skipping all this. Complete the following steps to get your test result. Swab your dog, activate your kit, and then mail your kit. It's for sending you ads. Okay. One, first activate. So we're trying to activate it. Here we go. Your dog's name. You got to write it on here. Do I have a pen? Hold on.
One second. I'm just going to make her full screen while I go grab. Dog cam. Okay, so it says here that I am supposed to make sure it's been 30 minutes since your pup last ate, which is true. It already happened. Swab the, swab the lower cheek pouches for 30 to 60 seconds to fully soak the sponge, which I will do now, and then insert the swab into the tube with the tip facing down. And then I have to close the cap and shake it 10 times and then reward my dog on a job well done. And then I have to mail it. I don't know how long it takes. It's so easy for rich people to get richer. You see it now, chat, don't you? Wait, what? How does that? What does this have to do with that? Oh, God, she has hiccups. Oh, my God. Okay. I am going to start the timer. As soon as I, uh, for one minute, as soon as I start swabbing, Hiya. Hiya. you know what? I'm going to bring her up here. Girl, she's so calm. All right, now, like the box says, we swab the lower cheek pouches for 30 to 60 seconds to fully soak the sponge. Insert swab into the tube with the tip facing down and then close cap and shake 10 times.
Okay. And then we'll reward her for a job well done. On, let me make sure the tube is perfectly closed. She's peeing. Yay! Good job. Good job. So attentive. She's such a good girl. Crazy. She's grabbing some toys. You don't cheer like that when chat pees on the floor? Yeah, I know. Okay, the kid has been activated. Hold on. Okay, breed test is activated. Activation date. Okay. Now, now let's see what else I have to do here. One second. Pull this tab out for number three. Mail this out. Okay, no postage necessary if mailed in the United States. Okay. Go. And then I will ship this out. And then we will figure out what happens. I like the position of YouTube plaques to get peed on. Yeah, well, I don't really care. She can pee on them all she wants. Anyway, I'm going to go, uh, speaking of peeing, I'm going to go pee and grab my food real quick. And then we'll move on to some other kinds of reacts real quick. But you guys watch her while I chat. Watch her while I uh, go pee and stuff, okay?
Hello. Was she a good girl? She doesn't do too much. In general, I, I, I feel like she's very chill. Like, her vibes are super chill. The best girl? She's just going to sleep. She ain't doing nothing. I love this fucking dog so much. Holy shit. You're looking up at me every time I make a noise. All right. She said that America deserved 9 11. Wow, she's based already. She's such a good girl. We need Kaya emotes. I agree. Oh. Okay, so let's watch, instead of watching a Tibetan Mastiff video, let's watch training a Tibetan Mastiff. Video, cause I, I need to learn how to fucking train a... Tibetan Master Puppet Training. Tibetan Master Puppet is cute, fluffy. Okay, this is an AI video, fuck that. Never mind. I take it back. This is a, this is a dumbass uh, way to... Learn about this breed. <laughs> Channel points to give. This part will be about a dog breed, the Tibetan Mastiff which is perhaps one of the greatest dog breeds of the past, and is considered by many to be the common ancestor of all the large shepherd dog breeds that exist today. Tibetan Mastiffs are treated with respect by almost everyone. In my personal opinion, Tibetan Mastiffs are amongst the most incredible guardian breeds on the planet. One good look at these majorly imposing dogs makes it easy to understand why they are the most expensive dog breed in the world. With their long, shaggy manes, these guys really uh -oh. do look like lions. In this video, I'm going to discuss... Uh-oh, they're fucking expensive. Well, guess what? New cancel, uh, new cancellation unlocked. I just realized motherfuckers would be like, Yeah, I know you got this dog from someone else who couldn't take care of her because she's a massive fucking dog, and I know she's mixed. Well, I don't really care about any of that. This is the Gucci shirt of dogs, is what people will fucking say. What the fuck? Bro, what? There's already an emote. How is that possible? Y'all work so fucking fast, it's crazy. It's absolutely everything that you need to know about the king of the canine world, the Tibetan Mastiff. 
Welcome back to the Fenrir Canine Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist and I'm the founder here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you choose the perfect breed for you. So if you want to join this amazing community, start by hitting that subscribe button, turn on the notification bell, and you'll never miss a future video. But now, let's get straight into our discussion of this fascinating protector from the roof of the world, the high plateaus of Tibet. And first, let's dive into the ancient history of the awesome Tibetan Mastiff. Tibetan's largest dog breed comes from the Himalayan region and used to be tasked with the protection of homesteads, families, as well as livestock. During the day, the Mastiffs were tethered at the entrance of their owner's property, which no doubt will have deterred any potential intruders. But at night, they were let loose to patrol their territory and to fend off predators, especially the snow leopard and the- Look at, look at, how, uh, look at how much of a guard dog she is, bro. She looks like a predator, you know? Tibetan wolf. Because the breed was developed in Tibet, untainted from outside influence for thousands of years, it remained relatively unchanged. And even today, there are two distinct types of Tibetan Mastiff. One more docile and more Mastiff looking, that is large and heavier, and a smaller, lighter, and more agile working type. These smaller Mastiffs are more aggressive in their guarding behavior. Responsible breeders today make an effort to continue crossing these two lines in order to keep the heavier type imbued with a healthy level of aggression and to keep the smaller type from losing the physical prowess needed to fend off predators. Now, let's take a moment to really acknowledge the sheer physical presence of a fully mature Tibetan Mastiff. With their dense protective coats, these bear-like dogs strongly resemble modern long-haired livestock guardian breeds like the Great Pyrenees, the Caucasian Shepherd, or the St. Bernard. In fact, if this resemblance is so striking that one would suspect these breeds to be genetically connected with the long-made Tibetan Mastiff, the founding father of them. This legendary breed is regarded by some as one of the world's most ancient breeds and as the ancestor of all the Mastiff breeds. And in fact, some scientists strongly suspect that the Tibetan was the ancestor for many of today's Mastiff and livestock guardian breeds. Now, fully mature Tibetan Mastiff males can reach heights of up to 76 centimeters, which is about 30 inches, and they can easily weigh 70 plus kilos, which is 160 pounds or so. These are large, sturdy dogs, well-proportioned and athletic. Along with their loose skin around their necks, their long, dense, lion-like manes protect the dogs in battle. Their glorious, dense coat can come in various colors. Whilst the original predominant color is said to be black, breed standards also allow for red, brown, red gold, grey, black and tan as well as chocolate and tan. These powerful, imposing dogs come with an immensely confident nature and a deep, booming bark that they are not shy to voice, especially during the night. Having served in various guardian roles for millennia, Tibetan Mastiffs can and will guard their family, their property and any farm animals there might be on that property. Perimeter guardians by nature, they will patrol the borders of their owner's farm, ranch or estate. Contrary to breeds like the Great Pyrenees or the Kuvas, they are not designed to live with the flock and bond closely with them. Instead, they are more oriented towards their owners and want to touch base with them on a regular basis. Being perimeter guardians as opposed to close quarter guardians like other Mastiff breeds, they should not be left alone in the house, simply because their instinct will tell them to get outside by any means possible, should they detect a potential threat especially. And you do not want a 70 kilo Mastiff. Bro, this fucking guy has gassed up this dog <clears throat> so much. It like feels like I'm, it feels like I adopted a fucking uh, dragon. You know what I mean? I love people saying haha cop dog. No, not at all. Worse though, border patrol dog. This is this is the most This is the most like fucking American dog in many ways. This dog has a tremendous amount of respect for private property, okay? That's what this is. That's what I'm learning. Mastiff smashing through your French doors in a frenzy. These dogs take their guarding duties extremely seriously. At the same time, they are quite intelligent to know when they are on duty and when they are not. Therefore, if socialized from an early age, Tibetan Mastiffs can be calm and composed companion dogs on walks and other outings. As long as people and other dogs stay away from their property, Tibetan Mastiffs can get along nicely with them to an extent.
Stable and even-tempered, they do make reliable family dogs. And contrary to other large guardian livestock breeds, they bond with the entire family rather than just with a single person in the household. Hey guys, if you're not already, you should be following our Fenrir Rescue Diaries over on Fenrir, following and strays and helping programs to companions that perfect canine companions that can be rehomed to their forever homes. So if you're interested in following my journey of how I do that, there'll be a link to that channel down in the description box below. That's I think you'll really enjoy telling. the journey, but I'll let you get back to the video you were just watching. So then, albeit highly intelligent, these dogs are not necessarily easy to train and neither are they keen to please their owners. Even though Tibetan Mastiffs are used to serve humans in various guarding roles, they do so on their own, making their own decisions about when to rest, when to bark and when to attack an intruder. In other words, they are flawless sentinels who work for their owners but not with their owners. All the more because, like many livestock guardian breeds, Tibetan Mastiffs are night active. Which makes sense given that many predators will attack livestock. Bro, this shit is... <laughs> this is gonna kill me, dude. That's why she was fucking crying all night. It makes it so much harder to... Oh, God. Oh, no. I mean, it's great that she sleeps all day, which is awesome for me when I'm streaming. But God damn stop during the night in the day they often rest but will quickly jump into action should the knees arise but there is a bright side to that equation tibetan mastiffs have always worked in small packs of their own kind at the very least in teams of two and as every pack has a leader whom the other members of the team or group will follow even this hard-headed breed can be motivated to follow the guidance of a calm consistent canine leader however such a leader absolutely needs to be experience with handling large powerful and independent dog breeds so tibetan mastiffs are truly incredible dogs extremely dependable guardians they will protect whatever or whomever their owner entrusts to them as these massive dogs are immensely independent they absolutely need an experienced leader but paired up with an owner who is up for the task of raising and handling them these bear like giants make outstanding guardians and loyal companions so i hope you enjoyed today's video on the tibetan I mean, dude, why you can't own a cane corso? What the fuck is this? Now I kind of want to find. Welcome back to the cane corso. Was another uh, dog that Channel. I wanted Today to get. Today I want to discuss why you should not get a cane corso. And hold off before you click off of this video. Just because anything I cover today suggests you should not get a cane corso right now, doesn't mean you can't get a cane corso one, two, three years down the road from now, when you're ready and everything's in place. And I'm doing this video because of the fact that everyone sees Bruce Wayne. Everyone sees how loving and obedient he is. I saw my last video where I took my cane corso Bruce Wayne to Lowe's and everybody was loving him and petting him and he was the star of the show. He didn't come that way, guys. It took a lot, a lot of effort to get my Kane Corso like that. So in this video, I want to go over ownership of a Kane Corso and things that may change your mind about getting one. And if you're wondering where my Kane Corso Bruce Wayne is, he is sleeping because it's midday right now and he sleeps all day. Maybe you guys want to see what it looks like on the opposite end of the camera. And this is what we got. Bruce Wayne's right here sleeping. Got my video light, my microphone. We're good to go, except for we need a Mr. Bruce Wayne right here. It's your fault that I'm waking him up from a nap. Bruce Wayne, you can't do a, uh, we can't do a Kane Corso video for your people without you here. You do not look happy about me waking you up right now. Come here, big dude. Oh, there's my big boy. Oh, stretch it out. Bro, that is literally not a dog, that's a panther. This is the dog I wanted to get, um, and then I settled for a Mastiff, uh, because, I mean, that's like a, like a, I think their kind of courses are called, like, what are they, like an Italian Mastiff, I think? But, I mean, I didn't really settle, to be fair. Don't diss Kaya like that, no settling, I mean, it's not, I'm, I love this fucking dog, shut up. At her face stretch it out oh you want to give me a hug and kiss okay every video 
he wakes up from a nap and he wants to give me a hug and kiss. We don't have to start every video with a hug. We don't have to start all the videos with a hug and kiss. No, we don't. <laughs> all right, let me just get us rearranged here really quick. And he's always, he does this Eeyore thing where he looks like Eeyore and he puts his gigantic neck in front of you and he pushes his, his big old meat head in your chest and he's like, just pet me. He suckers you in. He'll sucker you in every time. You're trying to go to do something, he'll just come up, put his head in your chest and bake. Fish used to do that as well. I'm just sweet and dopey. Just pet me. Dude, every time. Every time. Before we get into this video, Bruce Wayne and myself need you to subscribe to the channel, smash that like button, ring my dangling soon as any of the newest videos on Kane Corsos or Bruce Wayne. Yeah. The number one reason you can't get a Kane Corso is because you lack leadership skills. Without leadership skills, your Kane Corso is gonna take over. You do not want this guy bossing you around. You do not want this guy going around your house doing anything he wants. Would you just like to do anything you want? Would you just like to run around the house, chew things up, eat things? I'm sure you would. But we're not going to let you because I'm the leader, my wife is a leader, and Bruce Wayne's a follower. And I can't sit here in one video and tell you how to become a leader and all of that. It really comes through time and learning. And I actually have some courses that I'm always talking about that I listed in the description that will teach you guys how to be a proper leader to your Connie Corso or any dog in general. If you want your dog to be like Bruce Wayne, I highly suggest going through those courses. They use the same techniques and philosophies and methods that my wife and I use with Bruce Wayne. That way you too can also have yourself a Bruce Wayne on your hands. And if you use code Jason, you guys save 10%. Bruce Wayne, they save 10%. 10%. That's a pretty good deal. Kind of courses like to lean on you. Everyone has a course? Yeah, no shit, dude. These are all like professional dog trainers. So even if you don't have a dog yet, I don't care what dog it is. I highly recommend those courses prior to getting the dog. That way you're not making mistakes with your puppy or dog you adopted. You know what to do from the start. You know how to handle the dog. When situations come up, you know how to act and behave and, and what to do. And like I said, these guys, or any dog in fact, if you're not a proper leader, they're gonna take over and that's gonna lead to possible anxiety in the dog, meaning when you leave the house, have fun enjoying your furniture because it's not gonna last long. The dog's gonna become very destructive. The dogs may even pee everywhere. So first and foremost, you can't have a Kane Corso unless you have proper leadership skills. And for everyone wanting a Kane Corso watching this, can you comment down below why you want this? It's such a funny thing to say, but like, that's literally every dog. Like, that's any dog. When you don't fucking train your dog, and when you don't put your dog to work, like, what are you, are you trying to get a cat? Like, what's going on? You have to fucking train your dog. You have to put your dog to work all the time. Your dog needs to know that it's got shit to do. That's how it is. Breed. I'm really interested in seeing why everyone's so drawn to this breed. Yeah, and, and the bigger the dog, <clears throat> the more important it is that, that you properly train it, obviously. Obviously, Bruce Wayne is gorgeous looking. You are a gorgeous, proud statue. But if you can do me that favor, I'd love to, I'd love to see that. Bruce Wayne and myself would love to read the comments and, and why you want one of these guys. Number two, you should never get a Kane Corso if you've never owned a dog before. These guys are the Lamborghini of dogs. When you learn to drive, did you learn in a Lamborghini or did you learn in your mom's van? He's suspecting something out there. He's always on alert. I don't know what he sees. No, you don't learn in a Lamborghini. They handle different. They're more powerful. They're more aggressive, just like a Kane Corso. Baby steps, guys, baby steps. Own a dog first. Just because you've never owned a dog before doesn't mean you can never have a Kane Corso. Get a dog. Scared the fucking crap out of me, dude. Oh my God, my cousins are here. What, my mom, I know, I'm streaming, what do you want? Okay, I'm opening the door. Oh my God. I was like, what the hell's going on out there? 
dog, get a different dog, train that as good as you can, learn from your mistakes, and then bring a second dog, such as a Kane Corso, into your life. And I'll get messages from people saying, I've done all this research, I've done all of these online trainings for dogs, but I've never owned a dog before, can I get an Kane Corso? The answer is no. Absolutely not. In my opinion, experience trumps education every single time. A hundred percent. Let's do a fantasy scenario here for you guys. Oh Let's my say God. you needed brain surgery. It's not, not only did my mom uh, not show up and, and was unable to open the door, so she, I had to unlock it for her. She also brought the entire family, including my grandparents, including my cousins here. So there's like 11 people in the house currently. Which is pretty funny to consider because, you know, uh, she's sleeping at the moment. Okay, everybody chill. Everybody, oh, Jank is here even? Oh, my God. Okay. No, I didn't, but you're, you're going to wake her up. You're going to wake her up. What? No, I, we already decided on a name. Kaya. Kaya. I don't care that you don't like it, Mom. My mom is literally disappointed. Maybe it's Kaya. Oh, Jank liked bear. Okay, well, very nice. Uh oh. Uh oh. No, you can't pick her up. What are you doing? Why are you picking her up? <sighs> okay. Well, this is insane. I this is literally my nightmare currently happening. Okay, my mom is is. My mom is picking, trying to pick up the dog specifically so that, wait, hold on. Let me, let me try to get her to poop first. Okay. She's up now. It's over. Uh, here, grab her toys. insanity yeah um i had to i had to give her up because my family's here and uh, they're going crazy mode so they're gonna play with her pro jenk's son who's very young and terrified of dogs is going to play with her. So that's a big deal so that he's not legitimately scared of dogs. It takes a village. No, my, my, my mom, my grandmother's here. My uncle's here. Surgery. Now remember, this is fantasy. I'm just making this up. This would never happen in the real world, but fantasy. Okay. So just play along. You need brain surgery. You have two doctors that can do this brain surgery. You have two options. Dr. One, just finished medical school. Bro, this entire video is just like, this is a hard dog to train. This is how they train them? Down. Stay. Yep. Okay. Wait.
you gonna train him to do insane or train her to do insane tricks and stuff? No. I mean depends. Not every dog is like very capable of doing tricks. Don't listen to people who use terms like boot camp, alpha, etc. because it's all bad, outdated training based on toxic masculinity. Modern educated trainers only use positive reinforcement and know that the alpha theory isn't real and they don't use choke, pinch, prong, or shock collars. I mean, this dog is not as fluffy as the... Are you getting a truck? Kai's not going to fit in that portion. Yes, she is. Guys, this dog, even if she is, this dog, even if she's going to be massive, right? Like max out on the size as a Tibetan massive is going to be 150 pounds. 150 pounds is still the same size as a human being. If a human being, if a human being can fit in this fuck in the car next to me, then she can too. Okay. Today, I worked on a small bear named Stella. She is an eight-year-old Newfoundland dog, and I see her on... This is not a Tibet massive. This is just like... Um, oh, no, you don't know what you got yourself into? Oh, my God. Everybody, shut the fuck up. I had a big fucking dog before. I trained the shit out of my big fucking dog before. Okay? I know... How to train dogs. On an I know how schedule. to raise dogs. You, because of your own personal experience or your own personal, uh, you know, yeah, because of your own personal experience, you think like, oh man, I wouldn't be able to do it. Then uh, he must not either. Please stop. I mean, this this tracks with how fucking goofy uh, Kaya is as well. I mean, look at this. Look, uh, that that does look that does look just like her. No, am I crazy? Kaya, yeah, how dare you? Two years old and weighs 90 kilos. I feel like these uh, dogs are floofier than she is, though. So I think maybe... I think maybe... Um, maybe Kaya will not be as floofy. Especially if I keep forgetting to run the top of the hour ad break and then no longer can feed her. Because at the top of the hour, there's a three-minute ad break. And all of those subscriptions are going to the Kaya fund now. That's right. Depends on the age. It changes a lot in the first few weeks. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Um, mixes can show different attributes of different ages. Um, if you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for $5 or for free with the Twitch Prime by connecting your Amazon Prime account to your Twitch account. 
they probably blow dried them. They'll groom them for vids like this to make them as cute as possible. Yeah. Could have called her Monkey D. Floofy, shaking my head. That's actually a good name. Are you going to raw feed? No. I'm not going to raw feed, dude. No, fuck no. I'm not one of those fucking Instagram dog breeding accounts, brother. What are you, crazy? No, I'm not going to fucking raw feed this dog. I know that it's like the best thing to do, blah, blah, blah. But like, no. Uh, anyway, here's the three minute ad break now. <sighs> What's up? What happened? Wait, I, you let her eat again? Oh, no. Okay, well, she wasn't supposed to eat again, Mom. It's okay. Put her on the pad, please. She peed on the carpet? <laughs> Dude, I swear to God, there's no reason for me to train this dog because my mom is here, and she will do everything in her power to, to ruin it. Like... Anne şu kapıyı kapatır mısın? Allah'ını seviyorsan ne olur kapat şu kapıyı. Allah'ım ya Rabbim ya. Bye guys. Raw feeding can cause heart disease and kidney problems. is the worst thing to do for your dog. Not following. Go on not following the raw diet fad. Yeah, I'm not doing that. Apparently they, I, I let her off my sights. I let her out of my sights for three and a half seconds and... She's already peed on a carpet, so that's not... Anne! Anne! Please bring the toys back. Thank you. There she is. Please bring your toys back. Oh, thank you. Yeah, well, she's seriously waiting her toys. Here to wake her up, get her to pee on the carpet, and immediately leave family move? Yeah, I mean, that's it is what it is. Yeah, exactly. Imagine, this is like what you complained my grandma doing to you when I was a baby, mom. Yeah, I'm just letting you know you're doing what... Yeah, you're doing that. That's, you know. Don't be too hard on Kai. She was working hard on training your cousin love. Yeah, exactly. Make sure you get Nature's Miracle for pee-pee stains. Female dog's urine will bleach fabrics. Wait, really? Oh my God, is she going to poop? Oh, she's smelling around. Nope. She just likes to sit in her own piss. That's that's what she likes to do. I thought whenever she gets up and smells around on the pad, I'm like, oh, she's going to poop, finally. People saying nature's miracle rules. Nature's miracle is awful. Please look into the food you'll feed her. Anything other than the three top kibble brands equivalent to holistic medicine? Guys, you know why I did this today? Because I, I really, really desperately need... Uh, some, some backseat training from the chat. I think these guys are like a little bit older, so we'll see. My mom's dog is like 10 months old and still peepees and poopies in the house. Uh, yeah, I mean that, that to me... I mean, it's normal if it happens every now and then, you know what I mean? But if it's like a routine occurrence, then no. you're not, uh, you know, you're not. Hey! <laughs> no. All right, come grab her. Come grab her. That's it? That's the Tibetan Massive tries to attack me? I've been getting into the facility, as well as the Russian dogs I've been getting and all the, the big floof dogs who don't like people they don't know. 
And so I'm putting this video together and I'm not in my facility so I can't do a proper in intro of the dog. And basically this dog does not like people she doesn't know, tries to go after people when they come into her house. Um, and she's just young. She's less than a year. Don't forget to go spend time with Kai off stream. Thanks, chatter. I will not forget. Year old. So I'm going to walk you through the process of how to take like an inherited dominant uh, protective dog and help them become integrated into a normal household uh, with obedience. And this is the first session. So we get a lot done in the first hour. I will also not forget to feed her as well. Um, these are the things I will not forget to do. Wait, hold on. Okay, seven dog facts on you this really AI know video. The let's watch. And character of this special breed. So let's take a look at the seven points that a future Tibetan Mastiff buyer should think through carefully before deciding on this breed. This is AI, As always, though. the last point will now reveal whether the Tibetan Mastiff is an ideal choice for a novice dog owner. In order not to accidentally miss the next parts of the series and to receive instant notifications about new parts, so the Tibetan Mastiff. Re TM History 7, Fontos Zempon. This seems like a, I trust this video. This seems like a video that knows what the fuck's going on. Uh, actually. What is this? How to potty train a Tibetan massive puppy by puppyapartment.com. What the fuck is this video? Dude, these videos are insane. I want to do a deep dive onto this weird shit. Warning, federal law prohibits civil... In criminal penalty for the unauthorized reproduction, distribution, or exhibition of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, video discs, or digital files. Like, what the fuck? Dude, it, there's going to be a point on YouTube where there's just, like, never, like, there are no real fucking. Fuzzy and adorable Tibetan Mastiff. Every single one of these videos are AI. Puppies grow into, to defend hers, Every single one of these videos is AI. Palaces. Every single one of these videos is AI. What the fuck is this? I mean, actually, what the fuck is this? What, why is every single one of these videos AI? It's like confusing. Okay, now I now I want to watch this documentary, documentary which is TV. like Pro literally a In cut here, above, um, a cut above everything else, dude. Highly protective and uh, very ordered in the way that they do things. They don't like things to be different. So if you've got a lot of kids coming and going or visitors coming and going, um, it can be a difficult pet in that situation. Documentary TV is literally better than everything else that they've uh, I've seen on this matter on this process. Okay. Hold on. Why are you guys saying Papela? Stop. What I love most about the Tibet Mastiff is their innate ability to understand um, people and their subjects. So we have the alpacas. So as they're heard to be able to understand how they're feeling, um, if anything's a little bit different, they're incredibly intuitive. I always say that they can read our thoughts or maybe it's really they can hear our thoughts because it seems like when you're thinking about them and they're asleep, they wake up and and they're ready for whatever's going on. The history of the Tibet Mastiff uh, originated in uh, Tibet, in the high plateau out there. Um, they are a very um, primitive breed and were originally described to the West by Marco Polo. Um, they're called uh, Mastiff, Tibetan Mastiff, because that was the word for large dog. Um, so they're not really a Mastiff, they're a Molosser, which is a little bit different. Their original working purpose is a family and a livestock protection. So their uh, Tibetan name is Dokai, which means chained dog, literally. And so they would be chained up uh, with the, the nomads during the day. And then at night they would be set free to protect the families and the livestock from predators. 
Tibetan Mastiffs are more of a perimeter guardian than a flock guardian. So if you think of a Mayorema um, or Great Pyrenees often are very, very bonded to their stock. And so separating them from their stock is, can be challenging and stressful for the dog. The Tibetan Mastiff is more of a perimeter guardian, so they work, work the perimeters. Um, not that they don't care about or build relationships with their stock, it's, not, it's just not as intense. So they're, they're much more of a perimeter type guardian. There are about 40 recognized breeds of livestock guardian dogs, and um, they range uh, generally from west to east to uh, more human tolerant and more human defensive. And so on the human tolerant side, you're, you have your Great Pyrenees, which is a really common dog, uh, Anatolian Shepherd, Mayor Emma, those are real common dogs here in North America. At the other end of the spectrum, you've got the Tibetan Mastiff, the Central Asian Shepherd, uh, Sarplaninac, which I probably didn't pronounce that quite right, and the um, like Caucasian of Charka are very at the other end. Generally, Tibetan Mastiffs are much more human defensive than uh, most livestock guardians that the average person is gonna um, interact with in the United States. Generally, they're aloof with strangers. Um, so, so for us, like what we did with you, is we have, we have a specific routine we go through to introduce new people to the property. And so that takes place in a space um, kind of out here, away from the alpaca, so they're not really working. Um, they're very, very protective and highly defensive if we're not home or if that in introduction protocol didn't happen. So our property is uh, just over three acres, um, 3.2 acres. We are zoned for farming here, but we are um, surrounded by uh, residential areas. The front range is growing a lot, so the suburban area is definitely encroaching in here. Um, but both all of the properties that are, I should say, most of the properties that are adjacent to us are also farmland, up to, uh, I think the biggest property here is about five acres. My husband Brad and I live here, um, roughly an hour north of Denver and about a half an hour from Cheyenne, Wyoming. Um, so it's a, a higher altitude, we're just under a mile above sea level and so it's an arid environment. Um, we have a pretty good winter here and um, so just my husband and I are here. We have the alpacas and the dogs. Um, we have 11 dogs total at the moment and uh, 14 alpacas, so it's a pretty high ratio. The predators generally in the area are, um, we can have black bear and mountain lion. They don't come around here too much. So mostly what we see is uh, coyotes. Hello. And there's a pack of coyotes just to the north here that we Hello. hear often. And uh, neighborhood dogs are actually the biggest threat to alpaca. And, um, and uh, people too, so the bipedal predator is a, is a, it's a potential as well. So a typical day here at the Alpaca Mundo farm is uh, that we get up in the morning and um, unfortunately because we have close residential neighbors, our dogs are actually in their kennel at night, um, which is a little bit different. Uh, a full-time working livestock guardian would be out with the dogs. Thank you to the chatter who said Kaya is chewing her potty pad. I just saw that. Not good. <laughs> Bro, these dogs fucking just lay all day. It's awesome. She's just like, she's a chiller, dude. How long will the cage set up last? Uh, I'm going to have her... I'm going to have her in this setup for a little bit. I, I don't know. I mean, until I'm like confident that she can just, uh, until I'm confident that like uh, I can take her outside periodically, but she's literally super, super young right now. You know what I mean? Lazy liberal dog doesn't want to work. No, this is not a liberal dog. This is a working dog that wants to work at night. She goes to work at night, dude. Yeah. Until she's potty trained. She's a baby. She's a little baby. Are out with their herd, a hundred, you know, twenty four seven all the time. So, um, Tibetan mastiffs bark a lot. Live, that's livestock guardians in general. Tibetan mastiffs especially bark a lot. That's their first uh, level of defense in uh, announcing 
their presence and announcing to predators that uh, they shouldn't come any closer. So they'd bark a lot, which is not great for people who live nearby who maybe don't like dogs as much. And so that's part of the problem with people can suck it, dude. That's how, that's what I think. The the city's growing growing up is that that's squeezing kind of the the, the farmers out a bit. Y'all are fucking demons for real, by the way. Everybody throwing up pepelas. When you hear like, oh, Tibetan masses bark a lot. Y'all are fucking demons for real, okay? Why? Why is it that like you're excited at the prospect of this dog barking a lot? Why is that exciting to you? Um, so we get up in the morning. It's pretty much as soon as it's daylight. We start working on the chores, let the dogs out. Um, they do their perimeter checks and uh, livestock checks and we feed everybody and um, check, you know, fill the water, do whatever chores that we need to do. That's been... Also, this is more about their fucking alpacas than the Tibetan We spend mastiff. about an hour in the morning and then uh, we'll go about our day and then do the same sort of thing in the evening and bring everybody in at night. So while we don't have the dogs on 24 seven, we'd like for them to be on duty 24 um, seven, but just having them out there helps. Okay, this is better. Dogs 101. Nearly every huge dog in the world owes their heritage to one very special breed that started it all. Weighing in at 25 chihuahuas, the Tibetan Mastiff. The Tibetan Mastiff is a massive, big, furry, bulky dog. The Tibetan Mastiff's look is not just for show. They possess the strength and smarts to protect their families and flocks from outside threats. <coughs> when they were used as, as guard dogs, they would be entrusted with the care of... Americans will use any unit but metric. So true. And yes, this video is 2005's coded, yes. The entire village. A job that the Tibetan Mastiff has had since ancient times, when their ancestors lived with nomads on the high plateaus and valleys of the Himalayas. Some of these tough and intimidating dogs were brought as far west as Europe by the likes of Attila the Hun. Their progeny went on to become the modern Molosser breeds, including the Mastiffs, the Boxer, and the St. Bernard. They're treasured not only for their enormous size, but also for their breathtaking bark. The source of this voluminous... Was that an Apple iPhone alarm sound before Apple iPhone alarm sounds were a thing? What the fuck? This voice is found in the... Like... That's crazy. The boom, 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 boom. The source of this voluminous voice is found in the larynx, which houses the vocal cords. The vocal folds contract as the lungs push air through the larynx. Okay, I didn't want to learn this much about motherfucking Mastiff's dog. I'm the saying folds like... to vibrate at a high speed. This produces the barking sound. Larger dogs have longer vocal folds and larger lungs. That produces a deeper, louder bark. <laughs> After you hear its weighty woof, the next thing you'll see is the Tibetan Mastiff's heavy muscular build. Those muscles give the Tibetan Mastiff the strength to back up its bark. They have a plumed tail that can curl over and rest on their back. And their long, thick double coat is especially heavy on the neck and shoulders. This creates the appearance of a lion-like mane. Its large and striking appearance has captured the imagination of the most populous country in the world. China. It's a surprising new trend in a country where dog ownership was actually hung over teacher video. Mao Say Dung, dude? Banned 50 years ago. But now the Tibetan Mastiff is at the forefront of a Chinese dog fancy revolution. Over the past 20 years, as the Chinese. We got, yeah, we got, dude, of course we got the xi jinping's favorite dog dude middle class grew from poverty to prosperity so too i love the you sir of dog lovers sir i love they you now flock to tibetan mastiff conventions to see the best of the breed today in modern china owning a tibetan mastiff is considered the ultimate status symbol a large sprawling villa and a big ferocious tibetan mastiff that's what it takes to be see the the i i got i got the chinese status symbol baby large villa 
large uh large Chinese villa and uh just a big dog on that Very sprawling yard. In fact, there was a dog that sold for almost 600,000 in China. And one man has followed its meteoric rise from the beginning. Yeah, this is uh, Karma. Uh, the first male that... That's insane, bro. $600,000 for a dog? What the fuck is the dog doing? What the dog doing? No, but like for real. What the dog doing, motherfucker? I don't get it. That we uh, import it. Dr. Andrew Wang is a Chinese-born American who has been a Tibetan Mastiff aficionado for over 20 years, ever since he first laid eyes on one as a young man in China. They're very intelligent creatures, and uh, they are perfect guardians. His mission is to help the Tibetan Mastiff transition from its history as a ferocious guard dog to a modern family companion breed by promoting proper health and breeding standards. So he's heading to China, where canine culture is still a work in progress. Uh, during this trip, I would like to visit my old TN friends and some, to uh, know some new friends. Western innovations like genetic health screenings and pedigree registries remain in their infancy here. And that's a problem for a suddenly sought after breed. So Andrew is meeting with successful Chinese breeders to encourage them to adopt these new techniques. At a Mastiff kennel outside Beijing, Andrew meets one of the few female breeders in the country, Ms. Zhang Ji. Andrew gets a look at some of Ms. Zhang's finest Mastiffs. Eyes, baby. Yeah, we know you are pretty. He has a very nice muzzle and uh, a wider forehead. Say, ah. <laughs> These face-to-face -face meetings are crucial when it comes to convincing his Chinese counterparts to participate in international registries. That would pave the way for future cooperation between American and Chinese breeders. And Andrew has made a great impression. We want to learn their culture, their experience of breeding the dogs and other good things so that we can preserve them. She also told me, actually made me very excited, more and more people start to realize the significance of the health care uh, screening for Tibetan masters. Because they're highly prized as status symbols in China, it's still uncommon to see these mighty mutts as family pets. But in the rural suburb... Why is this fucking dog breed dog 101 video turned into like Chinese social commentary? Like I, it's very odd that like, what you can't just like talk about the fucking breed, like what the traits are and shit. It's like, uh, China has a one dog policy, just like America has a, a, a one China, two systems policy. China has a one dog, two pets policy. It's odd. In terms of Beijing, the Gao family's Mastiffs are just that. Kids adopted the baby Tibetan Mastiffs they like. They brought up the dogs, so when they have time, they feed dogs, play with them, walk them. I feel happy too, because kids are so innocent. They have their fun. I let them love animals. For Andrew, this is the end game to help the Tibetan Mastiff survive its newfound fame and take its place in Chinese society as the family dog he knows it can be. The Tibetan Mastiff does best in a cool and dry climate. Their territorial nature means their yard will need a big fence. The Tibetan Mastiff can experience a few specific health concerns. Hip dysplasia, thyroid problems, skin conditions, and ear infections are just some of them. Their thick seasonal undercoats shed heavily in the spring and fall and will require frequent brushing. For about three weeks, your house is gonna be covered in hair. As an independent and often stubborn breed, the Tibetan Mastiff is certainly not for the novice dog owner. Tibetan Mastiffs are loving and protective toward their families, but wary of strangers. To keep a Tibetan Mastiff happy and healthy, you want to be sure you have a cool, dry environment. This long-lived breed experiences many of the common health problems of large dogs, and its thick coat will need your attention during the shedding seasons. It's important to make sure your Tibetan Mastiff gets social experience from a young age. 
But if you can put in the time and care, you'll be repaid with unflagging loyalty. When this special Dogs 101 comes back, me it's time to wash the flu. Hi, Bobby. So this is one of the Bengal, Bengal Newfoundlands. I'm trying to be like that guy that shows the cats on the TikTok. <laughs> oh, he's too heavy. Okay, you ready? It's time. Okay, y'all suck. You said Dr. Mike got a fucking Tibetan master too. This is not, this is a new feed. This is a time. Newfoundland. You're stinky. I took you out in the rain. You were running around the field. Let's go in. Oh, look at that. Oh, God. Oh, my Lord. Look at that. This is what I'm saying, though. This dog. Holy fuck. That's a big ass dog. Bath time. Excellent job. <laughs> Bear is really easy to wash, actually, because very well trained, though. Holy fuck. He's just like down for anything. But I like to. T Based on this view, this dude lives in an eight figure apartment. Yeah. You know what's funny about this? Like Dr. Mike's apartment, this apartment that he's in. In New York City, I mean, he has 10 million subscribers, of course, but this apartment in New York City is mo more expensive than my house. Tell him, like I do with my patients, all the things I'm going to do before I do them. So, Bear, the first thing I'm going to do is turn on the water. Then I'm going to wet you. I'm going to get you very wet. Then once that happens, I'm going to get the shampoo and I'm going to lather you up. Once you're fully lathered, I'm going to make sure I get all ends washed of you from top to bottom. Do you agree? High five if you agree. Okay, you agree, good. The problem with this water is sometimes it has really bad control over temperature. So I wanna make sure that it's not too hot because for dogs, hot water is no bueno. See, he's like, he's doing the, the anxiety yawns. Craziest thing about Classic. Bear is that he looks huge when he's all poofy. Dr. Mike's dog is a certified therapy dog and can work in a hospital that's so far. When he starts getting- No, this is an incredibly well-trained dog. What? He's actually really skinny. Bear, how are you feeling about this? He's such a great His, dog uh, owner. Holy shit. His fur is actually a little oily, the top layer, so it prevents water from getting in. Bear, can I have a kiss while I wash you? Thank you. So you gotta be careful when you get dog shampoo like I did. I got the one that's concentrated, so you're gonna need to dilute it pretty heavily. Bear, this is your shampoo. This is the version of a dog sponge. So you want to introduce it to the dog so he, he feels safe with it, lets him smell it. I mean, Bear is really laid back, so it doesn't matter at all what you do with him, but okay. Now we wash the what knee. What a well-trained sure we dog. Deep into his skin folds. The good part about this rubbery thing is it does a good job at getting through the fur, even knots. Are you ready for all this care? Yeah, man, I've done this already. Also, Dr. Mike will probably go to a groomer normally. This is for YouTube, you know what I mean? Which makes sense. This is an awesome video. He trained the shit out of his uh, dog, and he wants to show it off a little bit. Also, when you do this with your dog, it should be a fun thing. So, like, bringing your dog snacks is great. Bear, do you want a snack? Or do you want to just lick my face? Your breath's going to smell better after I brush your teeth, though. Look how much fur comes out of this guy. <laughs> oh! Bear, I feel like you're concentrating on solving the math problem. Which math problem are you thinking about? Clean the butt. He doesn't like that. Good boy, Bear. Good boy. Oh my God, look at this. Dr. Mike got canceled before for saying obesity isn't healthy. That isn't, first of all, that is the most doctor thing on the planet to say. And secondly, it's true. It, like, yes, it's not healthy to be obese. Like, what an in I don't believe that that's what he said. Okay. And also, again, saying obesity is not healthy. Like, doctors are... Doctors are literally the most fatphobic motherfuckers on the planet. Followed set closely by EMTs, okay? Straight up. So... Like doctors are doctors are incapable of not being fat phobic. And and in in many ways that actually completely are outside of the bounds of like medicine. Nurses too, yeah, but EMTs. Especially EMTs, because they they go on call and uh routinely have to carry people, so they get like even more fat phobic than they would be. You know how many overweight EMS providers there are them out? Yeah, certainly. There's hella overweight nurses too. The fuck do you mean? You know how many? Oh, do you know how many like fat nurses exist? Yeah, that doesn't stop them from being fat phobic.
I had a raging eating disorder as a teen girl. My doc congratulated me on losing 60 pounds in two months. No concern at all. That's insane. Also, I doubt that he got canceled for saying obesity is not healthy, which is uh, true. There is truth to that. Um, but, uh, but like I said, these fucking doctors are incredibly fat phobic. If you didn't know that, uh, what about gay dudes in WeHo? Doctors are more fat phobic than gay dudes in WeHo. I have a special like sham wow esque product here where you can actually put your hands inside of this and just hug your dog like it's a giant little loofah. Giant little loofah. Look, it's like he's being born. <laughs> and I want to do this as much as possible before he starts flicking it off all over the place. Yeah. Okay, he did it. Nonetheless. Wow, this is soaked already. Then I have the next sham wow dog towel. These are super absorbent, so they do a great job at holding the water and pulling the water off the dog. Okay, come on. Oh. You see the floor is already soaked, that he just... Dr. Mike responds to the fat phobia claims. I really want to like Dr. Mike on YouTube, but he really has some fat phobic tendencies. He's actually a fan of intermittent fasting, which is unbelievable to me, considering he's a medical professional. Wait, what? It, wait, why would... Inter intermittent fasting is not unhealthy what the fuck In his most recent video, he talked about gastric bypass surgery being good for long-term weight loss. And just in general, he's talked about obesity and quote-unquote, watching what you eat. He's done videos where he tried certain fad diets for 30 days, but I've never watched them, so I don't know where he stands on keto, for instance. Anyway, it just goes to show that even doctors can still learn a lot in their own fields. I have to respond to this, uh, as well as many of these comments. Let's get into it. Honestly, I was really disheartened, disappointed when I read this post. I'm not one usually to get upset uh, when I read controversial posts about something that I've said, but this one touched me. You know, I, I have a lot of patients who are overweight and obese who are struggling to lose weight, know that they need to for their health. <laughs> he said, I know fat people. I know fatties, dude. That's what he said. He said, listen, listen up, fatties. I know some of you, okay? because they don't want to die young. They don't want to have a heart attack at age 40. Or and Let me tell you, all these fatties, they don't want to die young, okay? Which is, will happen to you if you keep talking shit online, if you keep doing this, which you shouldn't be doing this. You should be doing this, both at the table and right now, okay? This is what you should be doing. <laughs> oh, this is so funny. He said, I'm not fat phobic. I have fat friends and fat uh, uh, clients, patients. How can you argue with a doctor about it being good or bad for your health to be obese? First of all, America. Secondly, uh, the internet. And last but not least, doctors do actually have a tendency to be so fat phobic, as we've talked about before, that they sometimes unironically will, like, it, there are instances of doctors literally not seeing, like, an actual issue within their patients because they immediately go to, oh, you're fat. Um, which is additionally funny because 60% of America is fat. So like modern doctoring in America probably needs to uh, overlook the your fat examination because sometimes motherfuckers just have cancer, okay? And like, yes, losing weight if you are morbidly obese will help with uh, your your cancer treatment even. You should probably still focus on the cancer thing or any other uh, issues that they might have. Not saying that this is what Dr. Mike is doing. Um, I'm sure Dr. Mike doesn't do that because he's a YouTube doctor. So YouTube doctors who are also have like actual patients are way more considerate and way more fucking cutting edge with their understanding of medicine. I myself am a YouTube politics guy. So what the fuck do I know about medicine in general? I'm just simply telling you that doctors do sometimes have a, uh, 
tendency to hyper focus on uh, their patients being overweight, which is ironic because yes, uh, it is technically true that like if you are obese, morbidly obese, like that's going to cause you issues. So like being sick, and then on top of that, being obese makes it worse for you versus, uh, you know, being sick and being skinny. Uh, there's a big push now to educate doctors on how to talk about weight loss in a more productive way. I'm sure Dr. Mike is fairly nuanced and kind to his patients. Is the older docs that are dismissive and more brutal to their obese patients? Yeah. Forty two percent of adults are obese, but seventy three, including overweight. Yeah. Dr. Mike has a video on the fat false diagnosis slash fat phobic bias. Yeah, I like I said, there's no fucking way. There's no fucking way Dr. Mike doesn't know all that shit and hasn't addressed it before. But yeah, it's this weird predicament though, because it's this weird situation because like on the one hand, yes, doctors 100% need to overlook uh, or like look beyond obesity as like the main marker. But also on the other hand, they're not wrong when they say that like, yeah, losing weight would lead to uh, less issues. So it's this weird double bind where, you know, just do the doctoring, which is like beyond the obesity situation. Like I said, this is not about Dr. Mike. This is just about doctor. Uh, this is just about doctors in general. You know? Why did this dog stream turn into a Dr. Mike stream? Because Dr. Mike has a new fee and a very, he's a very hey, good dog are you happy? trainer. Yeah. Who's happy? Hang out here for a second. Tell me this doesn't look like the twin turbo back end of a, of a jet. You might look at this contraption. Okay, that shit is like a professional groomer equipment, which I should probably order as well. And say to yourself, why? It's selling me. Dr. Mike is selling me, dude. Oh, where are you going? Bro, this dog, literally, this was how she was yesterday, too, where she basically doesn't do anything for the entire day. She just, like, floops around, okay? She'll walk from one spot to the other and then just plop her entire little but also kind of relatively large body onto the next cold spot on the ground. But it's so funny because, like... She does it like she's been, uh, you know, she had such a busy day. Now, I know that's like puppy tendency, right? I know that that is like a big part of how puppies are. But it is so funny that like, she's just like, oh man, I had a long, hard day playing with this chew toy for like three seconds. You know what I mean? Get her a cooling mat when she stops teething. Yeah, I'm going to do that. She's working hard at being cute. Yeah, no, literally. She's like, fuck, man. Another day of being an absolute cutie under the belt. Not easy. Y'all don't understand. I've been paying taxes and smoking cigs. Why in the world do you need such a crazy dog blower dog skin is too sensitive so you can't really use heat the goal with dogs and drying them especially big floofy dogs like bear is to blow the wetness off of them i'm learning so much uh oh little stretch when you blow really forceful air, you could actually see his skin. And that allows me as I go through to see if there's any rashes or anything else popping up in the skin. Also a mistake that a lot of people make with these, if you go in like circles like this, you could actually create tangles in your dog's hair. So the goal is to always do it in one direction. Dude, why is this fucking dude, why is this dude so knowledgeable? Like he's handsome, he's a doctor. He also is like, what, weirdly knowledgeable on professional grooming? Like, it blows my fucking mind. Oh, my low back. Oh, 
Oh, the tail stays wagging, right? What? The tail stays wagging, yeah. This is like a shearing blade. It's a comb, but on the other end, it's really sharp. So when you're going through his floof, it could actually take extra hair out and tangles out. A lot of dog groomers will avoid using these because some people- And like 24 years old? No, he's not. He's like, literally, I think he's my age, right? Let's look. Dr. Mike age. Oh my God. He's like only a couple years older than me. Fuck that. Yeah. He's two years older than me. God damn it. Fucking guy. He's so successful and handsome and doesn't even look his age. But overuse them and start like ripping him. Like this motherfucker is 33. Look at him. Look at me. Like I'm, I'm 31. You know what I mean? I look like shit. They're out of their dog. So you have to be really conscientious about how you use this. <laughs> Get a new fee that he said. It'd be fun, they said. When hair clumps together on a dog like this, oxygen and air stops being able to pass through it, the dog becomes more vulnerable to skin infection. Camille Art, thank bacteria. you for the five, get the subs. I had a groomer for, for about a year, and then they just started jacking up their prices to like $600, even though this takes only two hours. I mean, they do come to you, but then their scheduling system was a mess, and I actually enjoy doing this. The only negative part about this is obviously the hair everywhere, so you have to vacuum after. And then also the fact that uh, my water pressure sucks. <laughs> but otherwise, it's great. It's very therapeutic. It's probably why like moms or dads play with like braid their children's hair. It's like, it's fun for them. And you also see that in other primates. I think monkeys love grooming each other too. I feel like I'm a monkey right now, grooming a bear interspecies bro it's because you're making him work three hours three dogs in a single hour do you think he likes it don't look this guy <laughs> who's he talking to this is a wire brush it's like good for finishing his coat but i bro this dog is, is this dog I, I don't know is this like newfie behavior are they like this because like when i used to, when i used to wash Sorry, when I used to wash fish, he would freak out, dude. He would fucking freak out, dude. I also use it in between to sort of get some of the smaller tangles out before I go with the bigger brush. Didn't he get bigger? It's because he gets floofier. <laughs> Just crazy. Again, whatever thing you use on your dog, introduce it to the dog. Bear hasn't seen this in a little while because I wasn't clipping him. So I need him to be calm when I turn this on, turn that on, let him see that nothing bad happens. And then basically I just want to clean up the fur in between his paws here because when it overgrows it can be a problem i'm actually surprised bear is so comfortable with letting me play with his paws because when he was a puppy he actually cut his paw real bad and i had to take staples out of it after he got an operation and he let me do it like a champ but it's important when your dog's a puppy that you handle their paws regularly for this exact reason so that you can groom your dog here we have a dremel which is how i shorten bear's nails if you actually apply a slight pressure to the top of the nail and to the bottom of the paw pad like this you can express the nail a little bit further which will allow you to visualize the vein better You. It's time. Wow, to take that part, that part is impossible. That is crazy. This is the best. This is the best trained dog on the planet. I used I used to do that. I used to do that on stream. I had that exact same fucking grinder. That shit is so what the fuck? I can't believe you can express the nail a little bit further, which will allow you to visualize the vein better. It's the most, it's the scariest thing too, because you don't want to like accidentally uh, go into the nail bed and it's easy to get into the nail bed. Cause then, you know, you're hurting your little pupper and it blows my fucking mind how this dog is so perfect. Like 
The vet will trim the nails for you. Yeah, sometimes. Easier for news with clippers. Yeah, it's... It's because you're not skilled with a Dremel. You got soft hands, brother. Dude, look at him. He's a doctor. He has the softest hands. You. It's time to take care of your gums and teeth to make sure that you don't get cavities. Bear is a little annoying when brushing his teeth because he likes to eat the toothbrush. Okay, so we're gonna get some of the toothpaste on the toothbrush and Bear will give you his teeth and allow you to brush them. This, yeah, damn, that dog's got and some white eat ass teeth. Like I said. This is not a glamorous job but it's a job that someone has to do. The hardest part is getting the back teeth. Yeah, I'm getting those back teeth. Don't chew the toothbrush. Just wait, wait before you- Get your dog an actual mattress to sleep on. will help with joints later in life. What? A mattress? Chew the toothbrush, please. I actually don't mind when he chews so much on the back ones, because then it's like he's helping me brush them. Next, we need to clean the inside of, well, not really the inside, more like- Stroke it. Outer in- why you got to do this to me? When you Did you really mean when you said America deserved dog piss? Yes, and it's the top of the hour ad break. First of all, there's so much going on here. Number one, I can't believe that you've already put like a Kaya emote out there. Okay? Number two, at the top of the hour, there's two emotes now. Kaya sleep. That's crazy. This is this is actually crazy. Y'all are going bananas mode with this. Look at this. And yes, at the top of the hour, there is a three-minute ad break. If you no longer want to see those ads, all you need to do is subscribe, which you can do for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime. By connecting your Amazon Prime account to your account, you get one free Prime subscription a month. Here's the three-minute ad break now. Downhill Zeus, thank you for the five gifted subs, allowing five people to no longer see the ads at the top of the hour inside of bear's ear and i have these special wipes that my vet recommended they're called vets best they have witch hazel aloe vera and tea tree oil all good ingredients against infections the goal is not to go inside your dog's ear fully but just to visualize the ear and get the gunk out bear gets a lot of gunk in his ears again because of his uh floopiness of his ears see how gross it is already i also sometimes will use a solution if there's like a lot of earwax or a lot of buildup that you actually put into his ear and then let him shake his. It's crazy how much he's like, this dog is so incredibly well behaved. Ear out. Oh, and a lot of people don't let their dogs shake their heads when they're cleaning their ears. Definitely let them because that could mean some water got in there and the way that they get it out is by shaking. Last part of Bear's grooming routine. Yeah, of course, top of the hour bot gave it a 9-7. It was a chatter. Chatters give chatter jibates literally a 10-10. Like, I, I rarely ever see chatters give chat jibates anything lower than a fucking, uh, you know, 9.75, okay? Chatter solidarity is is uh, too too much. is to get them outside of the bathroom, away from all this hair. Before we move on to the next section, status check-in of the bear floof hair. All right, part two, we wanna get him out of the bathroom because it's really wet in there and hairy. So we wanna do the finishing touches in here. He's already coming to join us. All right, Noof, we're gonna finish your coat now and blow you out. And then I'm I thought his name was Bear, is it Noof? Oh my God, look, 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 look. look. Oh yeah. Dreaming. She's running around in a Tibetan mountain right now. Chasing fucking sheep around. Look at that. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Running. 
A fucking cutie she is. I'm gonna do a little haircut for you because you're getting a little bit too poofy. High five if that's okay. Okay, good. Play dead. Play dead. Oh my god. Is that the gl most glamorous part of owning a dog? Shaving his beef. But he gets a lot of rashes here because of the moisture gets trapped. Isn't this incredible, Dad? <laughs> well, how would bears survive in the wild? That's my question. He would get so matted so quickly on his first day of being wet. He would get skin infections galore. <laughs> I think That's this is true. already more fur than we had in the bathroom. Yeah, this is your favorite part. I know. I know. The least glamorous. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I totally understand why a groomer would charge $600 for this. Like... The fuck, dude? Like, this is a three-hour process. Like, it's nighttime now. It might even be longer than a three-hour process, dude. What the fuck? That is a fuck ton of... Oh, my gosh, she's kicking. That is a fuck ton. No, this is not weekly. No, 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 no. Don't be crazy. No, no, no. This is like... This is a big... This is a big thing. You probably, I don't know how Newfoundlands work, but pretty sure like one, if you brush him once a week, also no shot, he doesn't have enough to pay that price. Law motherfuckers, a doctor and a YouTuber. Yeah, no, I'm sure he does. He just did this for the content. Probably. I'm like, I assume he has no time. Newfoundland should be groomed daily. It's fucking insane. What? Yeah, also he makes... Yeah, he said he likes it. So he probably does it every now and then if he has time to do it. Which makes sense. I mean, he clearly has done it a lot. This is like not a one-off. Like, he knows how to fucking groom this dog really well. Especially... You want to know how I know he did it himself? You want to know how I know... Newfoundland owner here, I have to do this twice a day to my baby boy. Yeah, y'all are crazy then. Okay. I know I know he's done it before because of the way he used that Dremel. That is an experienced man. Okay. He knows that he has to, he needs to trim the dick hair because uh all dogs with long coats uh will trap a lot of moisture in their coats when they get wet. Or trap a lot of moisture, and then they'll have a lot of skin problems. So he's right. You do need to fucking groom these dogs a lot. Um, I don't know. It's just crazy that uh, I'm kidding. I don't have a dog. Fuck you, man. Take a second off. Part of having a dog here. He's looking back at me as I do it. Yeah, clean my foot. Gotta keep the back area hygienic. Right, Noof? Look at the shine on this coat. This is a healthy mammal right here. How do you feel? <laughs> you smell nice? Mmm. Who's happy? Who's happy? Come give me a hug. Yeah, you're happy. Yeah. Your breath smells nice. All right, the floof is clean. He's dry. Dude, Dr. Mike is such a fucking dreamboat. It's crazy to me. He is such a fucking dreamboat, dude. For the most part, he's happy. Look at how much fur leaves this animal. And honestly, if I sat here brushing him for another hour, probably I could double this. But as you can tell, it's pretty easy to groom a dog that behaves well. So it's important to handle your dog early, get them used to you being the owner and playing with them and cleaning their ears and their teeth and their paws, because then it becomes a rewarding experience for the both of you. And that's why Bear's a happy pup, right? Yeah, good boy. Check out Bear's video when I first got him. Click here to check that out. And as always, stay happy. Ha you guys benefits of having a dog? probably know that I have a pup husky named Roxy. And while I thought that it's cool to own a dog, I think it would be so much cooler to own a bear. Meet Bear Varshavsky. Wait, he already has a husky on top of this, so he has two dogs? Huskies are insanely high maintenance, no? I can 
I'm getting so much content ideas from him. Come on, come on, little boy. Come here, come. come how old is life. how old is he? Yes, this is little Bear Varshavsky, my new pup. And I know your first reaction. What about Roxy? Don't worry, Roxy's not going anywhere. She's my little pup. Forever and ever. Like most of you know, I do share Roxy with my dad. In fact, we got Roxy together when my mom passed away to have something to bond over. But nowadays, since I'm living apart from my dad, I feel awful when I have to take Roxy away from him and then leave him alone because it makes him really sad. And on the other hand, when I have to give Roxy back to him, I get really sad because I want to still have a pup around. What better way to celebrate being a dog lover, get health benefits, cheer up myself, cheer up my dad, and get Roxy an awesome brother than to get a little Newfie and name him Bear. A Newfie is a Newfoundland. And I know it sounds like I'm saying New Finland, but I'm saying Newfoundland in a way that it's properly pronounced. So I'm still learning myself. This little guy here, right now he's only eight weeks old. He's technically tiny, but he weighs basically half of Roxy. So you can imagine he's gonna be probably 150 pounds when he grows up full size. He's gonna be a huge beast. Wait, how how much how old is she? Saying new little guy here. Right now he's only eight weeks old. Eight weeks old and and he's old. like he's technically tiny, but he weighs basically half of Roxy. So you can imagine he's gonna be probably 150 pounds when he grows up full size. He's gonna be a huge beast. The highlight of the Newfoundland breed is their temperament. I mean, these guys are known as gentle giants for a very good reason. They're amazing with kids, they're amazing with people. Uh, they're basically giant people pleasers. And that's how their breed came to be. They were working dogs that helped haul loads. They helped rescue people that were drowning because they're excellent swimmers because of these web huge feet of theirs. I mean, his paw is bigger than my wrist. Like, I don't have the biggest wrist in the world, but Jesus. He has hiccups. That's why, see, that's why I suggested Gentle Giants Rescue. I mean, it worked out for me in the end. The, this dog is sick though. Growing pups always have hiccups. That's not new, so that doesn't even concern me. <laughs> I'm sure you've heard that there are health benefits to owning a pup, but do you know exactly what all those health benefits are? Anxiety and depression. We know dogs make us feel good, but actually they're great at warding off mental illness. Yeah, those who have pups generally have less anxiety and less depressive symptoms. We don't have a clear understanding why dogs help Wait. with anxiety and depression, but we know that they definitely make you more social. And this is great for all ages. Kids benefit from this. There was a study talking about how uh, kids who are autistic benefit greatly by spending time with a dog. It's great for socialization. Another time it- Wait, what the fuck? Does that mean I'm gonna be a worse poster now? Does that mean I'm gonna not- be Holy fuck. After P Fish passed away, I did find myself on Twitter way more, dude. I'm not even kidding. I mean, obviously, that's what, like, I wonder if that has something to do with it. What the fuck? I was, I am much, much more severely mentally ill now than I was when I had fish. I was healthy. I was happy. I was, lo I was laughing all the time. To be fair... I mean, immediately, I recognize one thing. I haven't raged at chat one time today. And it's a Sunday. It's a chill day. There was only one guy that was like, uh, I think, jokingly mentioning that we're not doing any news. I think it was Apollo Nor. But um, I do think that yesterday, I wasn't live. And when I'm not live, everyone knows, what do I do? I'm constantly on Twitter. I'm constantly posting on Twitter. And I did not post on Twitter at all. 
Not only did I not post on Twitter at all yesterday, I didn't even post on Instagram at all yesterday, which is very interesting. I didn't post on any of my social media yesterday because I was spending the entire day with this puppy. And it does feel like maybe I don't have enough time. Or maybe my mental health is repairing already. It's also wild how much this dog sleeps, though. I mean, it's crazy how much this dog sleeps. It's like... I want to I wanna almost, like, keep her up a little bit and, like, make her run around a little bit so that she will not stay awake all night. But she's so fucking cute when she sleeps. I feel bad waking her up. a point in life it's really good for is when your 20s and your 30s and you're trying to find someone new and you're dating and it's not that easy guess what get an adorable pup go to the dog park meet some dog people she still generally hasn't dog pooped since she really ate this awesome morning people. i don't know why i don't know why i did awesome people we've talked about the negative effects of chronic stress on your body and a lot of that is a result of the chronic activation of your sympathetic nervous system that's that flight or flight response that keeps you always on edge well guess what Having a dog, petting a dog, lowers your blood pressure, calms your sympathetic nervous system, and you get a lot of health benefits from that. Not only is your heart healthy because your blood pressure is lower, but in studies when we've looked at dog owners and comparing them to non-dog owners, we found that the dog owners had lower cholesterol, lower she triglycerides. Moved. She fucking moved again. She moved again to another cold spot. Oh, she's moving again. Where will she go now? That's crazy. This dog literally only gets up to find another cool spot and then just, you know, parks her ass down. Look, she plops her entire body. She plops her entire body down like... She has been working all goddamn day, and she's fucking tired. What is that? She literally will just drop her entire body down. Like, you would think that she's been running around all day, dude. You, you, think, you think she's been doing so much work. Oh, wait. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. Oh my God. I think she's going to poop. Oh my God. Fuck. I got excited. <laughs> she's just away from the camera. She's like, nah, I'm done. Give her privacy. Are you kidding me? False alarm. Oh, the guy in the video was like, if you have high blood pressure, just get a dog. You don't need medicine. You just need to relax. Yes. This American doctor with a MD is telling you, you don't need medication. You just need a dog. You got it. And that really makes a difference for heart health. It reduces the risks of heart attack strokes. If you can reduce a chance of having one of these major illnesses and diseases happen to you just by owning an amazing dog, while this is not directly a health benefit, I think this is incredibly awesome. Dogs' noses are 40 times more sensitive than a human's nose is. And what dogs have been able to do is sniff and detect cancer. Initially, this was just based on anecdotal evidence of people telling stories that the, a dog was li licking their lump and they got it checked out and found out it was cancer. But now we have scientific research on this to the point where we're thinking about using dogs in medical care for this. It's incredible, dogs can smell cancer. Contrary to popular belief, having a dog in a household actually decreases the likelihood that your children will develop asthma, eczema, or allergies. And that's usually a trio that runs in tandem to- Yeah, make one about cats, Dr. Mike. You can't, exactly. I bet if Dr. Mike was about to do a doctor ass video on cats, he'd talk about toxoplasmosis, you know what I'm saying? 
This guy, I love Dr. Mike already. I love him even more now, okay? My man is such a dog supremacist. It's not even funny. Respect. Together. Let's get out of science land for a moment. Not only do you see benefits within heart attack patients, depressed patients, Alzheimer's patients, but the biggest benefit and like the most exciting stuff that I've seen research on is that they compared people who own dogs and people who don't own dogs. And guess what? Those who own a dog drastically and significantly extend their lives. And we don't have a clear explanation for that. Whether that means dog owners take the more best walks and are more camera. active. Is it because they're more social? Is it because their stress levels are lower because they're constantly petting and playing with their dogs? It's like... Is this going to be some kind of look at the wallet pictures of my kids and how cute they are? But with Pupper Stream, I'll understandably wait out the honeymoon phase for like 10... Uh, for like a week, 10 days top. Brother... All you've done just now is just show how sad of a person you are. Like, I feel bad for you, man. Like, that's just sad. I, I don't understand why. God, there's so much. Does the son know Ethan is presently going Joker mode? Yeah, this guy is like, like, you only come in here for negativity. Be a little bit more positive about your life, brother. I swear to God, it'll be better for you. Get a dog. Get a dog. Have you seen this? Aw. Okay, I'm not changing Hassel. That's crazy. It's wild that there's already a, a an account for this a stan account for for my dog. That's insane. Y'all are crazy. Uh, I'm not going to change hustle, but I would be down to, uh, you know, use some, some, put some Kaya emotes in there too. So that's all you needed was a dog. You're acting really nice today. Yes, I am a I am a new father. Reality is, uh, as a new as a new dad. Even though I didn't sleep at all last night, normally I'd be really grumpy, but it's very hard to be grumpy when you got this little thing here. You know what I mean? It is incredibly difficult to be grumpy. Cute as hell. Check my Kaya L. Oh my God. You guys have already fucking went bananas mode with this. There's so many. This is how I felt about my kids before they started shitting and screaming and walking and talking. Yeah, except she's already shitting and screaming and walking and talking. Kaya Industrial Complex. Also, what the fuck? Parents should talk about your kids in Twitch chat, Lamau. First of all, parents should talk their kids all the time. Twitch chat is the perfect place to shit talk your kids. They probably look at me shit talking to you guys my 30,000 children and say and think oh he's just like me for real 
likely a combination of all of these factors. What's cool about having a big dog is that they can serve as guide dogs, as rescue dogs. They're so smart, they're very intelligent, they're people friendly, and that combination is really good for a working dog to have. Now, I don't think I'm gonna be doing a lot of rescue missions here with Bear, but what I will be doing is I'm gonna get him certified as a therapy dog, and days that I can, I'm gonna bring him into the hospital for my patients to play with him because He's so calm, he's so friendly, and a lot of times in the hospital where patients are sick, we tend to be afraid to bring humor and happiness into the situation because we feel like it may upset the patients. But in reality, patients need a laugh. They need a good time. <coughs> Those who are sick need a laugh the most. So I hope that Bear can be an awesome therapy dog. We can bring him into the Gamer service dog barks when his frame rate starts to dip. hospital yeah. maybe we can bring him on a curbside consult with us and ask people questions on the street with bear with us and uh, i hope that you guys enjoy him as much as i do there's gonna be tons of pictures of him on instagram and all over social media so please like those oh and if you have a recommendation for his social media handle please let me know because i haven't yet come up with one i don't know if everybody knows what a new fee is so i was thinking bear the new f might be a little weird for most people so if you have a social media handle recommendation, please write it down below. If you love dogs, give this video a like. If you're curious about my other pup, Roxy, who's an amazing Husky, check out a day in a life Husky edition on my channel now. Again, guys, thanks for watching. Stay healthy and happy. Oh my God. Oh my God. Look at her moving around. Oh my Lord. What is that? What is that? That's crazy. Okay, we've done so much uh, Tibetan Mastiff living shit. What is confirmation? That um, I think it's a win, and then people... Oh, this is like training them to become... or. Oh, okay. So, yeah. She's mixed with something. Um, we will find out, hopefully, when, uh, what... Yeah, this is what I've seen this already. This is sick. Um, I'm getting secondhand stress release from watching her. Yeah, I know. She's just. Are you recording a podcast episode today? No, we're going to do it tomorrow because unfortunately, Arm wrestling. every single person that is on this podcast normally is not here. They're actually. They are currently presently. Holy fuck. They are currently, presently, at Coachella. This thing is my favorite niche sport, and it's perhaps one of the most misunderstood. If you ask a random person on the street, arm wrestling conjures up ideas of drunk idiots at a bar with fragile egos trying to out-macho each other. But that's not the case at all. Tra we got new casually explained, baby. Let's watch. I'm glad that he's back to making videos. Travis Bajan's actually really good. Beyond that, our general view of arm wrestling is made up of those videos where neither person knows what they're doing and just straight up snaps their forearm clean in half. This isn't what arm wrestling is about, because in reality, the arm wrestling community is a lot like the bodybuilding community. People think bodybuilding is about vanity and trying to be more jacked than other guys so you can get girls, but anyone who's gone to the gym long enough knows the only people admiring your micro thong is the other homies. In a similar sense, arm wrestling appears to be two roided up monsters with wrists bigger than my neck trying to rip the other person's arm right out of the socket, but if you start a match and your opponent doesn't want to hold your hand, you literally ask the referee to get the strap on. It's remarkably progressive, really. What most people don't know about arm wrestling is that it's primarily a hand, wrist, and forearm sport. It's not entirely how much you can bicep curl. In a sense, it's similar to rock climbing because even though the specific strengths are different, in uh -oh. rock climbing, you can take a super jacked bodybuilder, but because he's never trained his grip in a crimp position, he's gonna be barely any better than an Where's average guy because it's largely about your finger strength to body weight ratio. Similarly, professional arm wrestling requires strengths that most regular gym bros She's never moving. train, such as being able to rapidly fuck- Sorry, I, I was not even looking at the fucking video at all. I'm sorry. It's toy time. 
No, it's like, it's toy time. I'm going to try to put her on the pad again. See if she poops. I know it's coming. Now that she's doing toy time. Now that she's doing toy time, a poop is coming. Like, I can feel it. Shit on the YouTube plaque? Yeah, do it. Not exactly on the P, but she is very close in proximity. To the PP. Ne getirdin? Merak ediyorum. She already knows.
goes out his seat already. Just kidding. That's a trick. It's the easiest one to teach. When I got her yesterday, she literally was so young that she didn't even know that like treats, like she didn't even know the crumple sound. Like she didn't even associate that with like delicious goodies. That's how young she was. <laughs> Laying on the pee pee. Not do that. Okay. Off under the let's, table. Walk, let's react to casually explain YouTube together. Shorts in a foreign language. Things that most in a crimp position, he's going to be barely any better than an average guy because it's largely about your finger strength to body weight ratio. Similarly, professional arm wrestling requires strengths that most regular gym bros never train, such as being able to rapidly fuck off under the table or shit post on YouTube shorts in a foreign language. While most people think of arm wrestling as a side-to-side -side movement, this is literally how you end up breaking your feeble, normal person bones. If your real-life opponent insists that anything but side-to-side -side is cheating, make sure you do it over a ledge so you at least get a banger of a live leak video. In reality, arm wrestling properly is almost always both people pulling corner to corner, or occasionally one person pressing and another person pulling. If you ever see someone using their body weight in a casual environment, that is actually the safe and proper way to arm wrestle because it keeps your arm in line with your shoulder. If, however, you want some MLG pro tips to beat your friends at the bar, here are some tricks. Grip their thumb higher up for more leverage, start with a slightly cupped hand, bring your elbow and shoulder in closer to the middle to get a higher hand position and a narrower V-shape through your arm and shoulder, <laughs> lean in as close as possible to the other person, give them a quick peck on the lips, and then hit them with a flash pin like the patriot you are. There are then additional stylistic techniques such as back pressure, side pressure, posting, which I like to do at most once per year. Then there's pronation, top rolling, and hooking. Then there's the more unorthodox moves like flop pressing, the king's move, the dad move, and many others that you can employ to emphasize your opponent's childhood weaknesses and engage your strengths. There is of course one strategy above all else, however, which is just being really, really fucking strong. Again, at least physically. One of the reasons- Bro, look at these fucking hands, dog. Look at the- I mean, that's like, that's insane. One of the reasons I find arm wrestling so appealing is because it has one of the highest genetic anomaly to overall population ratios of any sport that I know of. Think of how crazy it was back in the day when Usain Bolt, who was six inches taller than what everyone thought a professional sprinter should be, came in and smoked every world record. And we all said, Wow, very fast and impressive. I am greatly pleased by this novelty. Arm wrestling is like that, but it's almost every single person. Some people say, you know, what if there was a version of the Olympics where everyone was allowed to do as many drugs as they want, and we say, to heck with it. Let's see what humanity's really capable of. And if you know anything about sports, that already exists and it's called the Olympics. But in arm wrestling, it goes beyond that, not to just the limit of human pharmaceuticals, but the limits of human evolution. What if you combined a crab with a human? That's right, Oleg Zok, the greatest left-handed sub-heavyweight of all time, an all-around nice guy. How about a human in a can of spinach? Exactly, Alan Fisher, who reminds me of someone but I can't quite put my finger on it. How about a bunch of bananas and a human? Not a gorilla, it's Denis Saplenkov's hands. Now imagine the enormous mythological creature, the Leviathan. Doesn't really roll off the tongue, does it? But if we shorten it a little bit... Exactly, Levan Saganashvili. This guy's 420 pounds and has nearly 10-inch wrists. For what? reference, I just measured the circumference of my ankle and it was nine and a quarter. And look how thick those bad boys are. After looking at these mutant level athletes, imagine what chance you'd have if you looked like a regular dad. 
Exactly. You'd be John Brzezink, the undisputed greatest of all time. Because you have to remember my golden rule. Always hide your power level. One of the immediately noticeable characteristics of a lot of arm wrestlers is they can't fully extend their arms. And while that leads to some of the most contentious issues in the sport, it also leads me to believe that the evolutionary pressure on the T-Rex was actually nature's effort to create the perfect arm wrestler. Arms that barely extend to help them win matches, and a giant mouth to blame the shit refs. Nevertheless, while doctors in the YouTube comment section, which of course are the same people, often debate the cause of why arm wrestlers have arm Chat, look at this. She keeps like resting her head on my fucking, on my peck. Are you pranking us right now? I'm not paying attention to the YouTube video. I am, it's funny, but like it's hard. Arms that are so messed up, there is yet to be a definitive conclusion. It does, however, remind me a lot of the people who watch mogul skiing videos and comment, to, Why do they all need so many knee replacements? Or the people who comment, to get up on Why the... does everyone keep getting brain damage? On League of Legends videos. What I love about the arm wrestling community is that it's niche enough that it's kind of like one big family and they all really admire each other. I remember seeing mainstream Reddit videos posted of guys like Denis Saplenkov crushing walnuts with his fingers or Oleg with his weird left arm and people would comment, I mean, if that's what you've been given, then can't say I wouldn't do the same thing. As if what they experienced was some type of disability. And while yes, Dennis probably needs to use an iPad as a phone, these guys are genuinely revered in the community for their special abilities. Whether okay, it's she's officially on hand, the desk, Dennis on her own. Dennis's unusual and jacked frame, Devin's fucked up elbows, Michael Todd's coping mechanisms, or Dave Chafee's table IQ. It's genuinely seen as each person's talent, and all the average people in the sport are envious she's they don't looking have for their the own ability that other people can meme about. As it currently stands, the undisputed number one super heavyweight is Levon Saganashvili. Uh, he's that one, by the way. She's literally looking for the training bits. Oh! 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 <coughs> she just... I'm scared that she's gonna poop on the desk, you know what I mean? Hold on, I'm gonna put her back on the rug. Or on the... On the... On the pad. She's just looking up at me like, nah, dog, this shit ain't happening. Okay. This is this poop that you're looking for from my earlier consumption of food this morning is not going to happen. She's just chilling. I've also never seen a dog be this chill about her own uh, pee. She's just laying on, on her pee like it's nothing. They don't like to go inside. Replace the pad. It's not that. I wonder if that's the case. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put her outside for a second. Real quick. I'm going to take her in the front yard for a second. See if she wants to poop there. Maybe that's the case. I doubt it, but hold on. You won't be able to see that on camera, but by the way, Here, he's literally obtained quick. final boss status because he only does super matches against one opponent at a time. While Ermi's Gasparini recently showed some serious potential in stopping Levon in later rounds after tiring him out, the only person who's thought to be able to beat him currently is the Australian heavyweight Ryan Bowen, who everyone in the community agrees would win pretty easily, but unfortunately can't get his weight up to meet the class requirements. 
Meanwhile, there are probably a dozen other people who are similarly matched to each other who are all vying for number two in the world, because they all know the secret to arm wrestling success. Claim you're better than everyone else, then injure yourself before you have to prove it. One of the most popular arm wrestlers is Devin No Limits Larratt, who's not only world champion in multiple divisions and an ex-Canadian Special Forces member, but also one of the most charismatic ambassadors of the sport. When I was first researching arm wrestling a while back, I thought, hey, maybe I should try this. Let me see who the best arm wrestlers from my small city are. Perhaps one day it could be me. And then I was like, oh, it's, no, it's Devin Larratt. Never mind. Anyway, joke's on him, there's no arm wrestling clubs here, so I'm still literally undefeated. Devin is a lot like if Goku and Wolverine were one person, and that he always ignores his injuries, rises to the challenge of new opponents, and then breaks his previous limit to defeat a stronger enemy. And he looks like a homeless Wolverine. While he was destroyed by Prime Dennis in 2018, this brought rise to the notorious Pancake Devin, who bulked up his six and a half foot frame and easily defeated Michael Todd for the heavyweight title in 2021. Similarly, in order to challenge Levon, Devin surpassed even his pancake form to contend with the Georgian, but despite his efforts, maple syrup intake, and high IQ match preparation, Levon had a special strategy prepared, which was turning completely invisible. Interviewed later, Levon said that at the time, Pancakes with Syrup Devin was probably the second strongest arm wrestler on the planet, validating the moniker Devin, Levon is the limit, Larrett, which I'm sure he will not be pleased with me saying out loud in this video. Since then, other characters have emerged, such as Ermi's no-fat, only-quality Gasparini, who, after learning English to sell merch, is now clearly the main number two contender. There's also Zaur, 10 to 12 minute breaks between sets but still gets injured anyway, Pai Zelayev, another less tested number two contender, and Dennis, never show any emotion because then they'll know your power level Soplenkov, who is staging his comeback. As I'm sure you can tell, I absolutely nailed the native pronunciation of all those names. Dennis, who I'm referring to on a first name basis because I like to imagine we're best friends, unfortunately fell ill in 2018 but was previously considered the strongest arm wrestler ever before Levon, and is considered by some to be the only person in the weight class who could potentially match him on a strength basis, given not only his past dominance but being pretty much the only person to have stronger gym lifts and multiple exercises, having an enormous amount of table experience, insane hand strength, and having possibly the most unbendy arms in the game. Why does he know so much about arm wrestling, dude? It's like kind of wild. No, she did not poop. Marat's looking at her. Uh, Marat's... Marat's taking care of her right now. See if she will. He's the only person who, after his illness, looked like this and people said, Oh, he looks so small and frail. I, I hope he recovers soon. And then you step back a second and think, well, wait, wait a minute, he, he's curling my bench press. This guy's massive. And you're forced to diagnose yourself with someone else's body dysmorphia. Thankfully, he's been doing a lot better, and it's especially exciting because Dennis and Levon have never faced each other before, and everyone's hoping that Levon triples his Georgian pancake intake, Dennis absorbs another bar of plutonium. Oh my god, I'm such a fucking fatty. That like, even seeing that pancake makes me want to have some pancake. Turns his hat backwards, and I can pay $25 to watch it on the internet. Similarly, with the internet, it's the first time ever that teenagers around the Murat, the Optima! Murat? On. The world with giant hands, forearms, and literally no lower body have finally found their calling. I mean, I think we're currently in the golden age of arm wrestling, so I highly recommend you get involved by getting a bag of chips, leaning back in your gaming chair, and watching hours of arm wrestling YouTube videos back to back without ever participating like me. <laughs>
Marat was able to make her pee and poop outside. Holy fuck. That's right. We did it, folks. We did it. We all did it. We all played a role in this. Hi, Murat. Yeah, I gave him credit, Mom. Mom is mad that I'm not. Uh, she's she's mad that I said we did it, folks, when it was Murat who helped. Out. Oh, my God. She's going to take that fucking YouTube plaque down. Uh, uh, uh. Uh, uh. It's so funny how big she is already and is like incapable of recognizing her own size, I guess, because she will quite literally fucking push the, the gate. Oh, she's crying. She's whining a little bit. She's bored. She's like, I'm awake and I'm not getting enough energy from you and I don't like it. You have confined me to this space. You have contained me. She's, pr she's for prison abolition. This is a prison abolitionist dog. Let's see. She's checking the space out now. Climbing mountains. This dog so much. She's patrolling, maybe. How old is she? Is she your first pet? No. <coughs> I had a dog. Uh, I had a dog before her. I had a, a big pit bull by the name of Fish before her. And, uh, you know, most engagement you've had. What do you mean? Because of the dog. Attach crate to fenced in area. I did do that. I think she's getting restless. I think she's getting bored. Yeah, she's like the con. I'm recognizing the confines of my. Of my mere existence. She's starting to get bored. I think I might have to end the stream. Oh. <laughs> Look at this. I think I'm going to end the stream here, guys. And I'm going to go spend some time with her. Hold on, Kaya. Hold on, baby. Okay. You know what, guys? Uh, on that note, I think that uh, I will run the last uh, woman ad break here. She's already, she's crying a little bit. And I am going to see you guys tomorrow. Monday, uh, regular old news day. We're back. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a little different because uh, I do have her here. But now that she got her poop out, she probably has some energy. She wants to play around, so I'm going to do that now. All right. As a dad, I have a new set of responsibilities now. So I got to go deal with those responsibilities. The quick, short, five-hour stream. Wanted to share this with you. 
looking at me like, what the fuck's going on, dad? Anyway, love you all. Uh, we'll be back with some normal news. Bye, everybody. Love you all. Peace. Streaming at